It's Game On, presented by Bank of Hawaii. And a very pleasant good evening from Simplify Arena at Stan's Sheriff Center, where it's the final evening of the Outrigger Invitational as number three Hawaii plays host to the Ant Eaters and number five ranked UC Irvine. And this is Game On, presented by Bank of Hawaii for Rainbow Warrior Volleyball. Hi, everybody. Hope you're having a terrific Sunday evening. Scott Robbs, along with James Anastasiadis and Ryan Kalei Suji. Well, coming into this tournament, we talked about the fact that this was like a mini Final Four. So let's review how things have gone. First off, you see the standings. The only unbeaten team to this point is the University of Hawaii. Irvine is one and one. And there you see Grand Canyon and Lewis both finished the outrigger with one and two Mark, so let's look at the score starting on Thursday. Right off the bat, Irvine in five over number one Grand Canyon. Hawaii made quick work of Lewis. Then in Friday night's affair, another five setter in the opening match. That time, Lewis upsets number five UC Irvine. Hawaii plays by far their best match of the season as they dominated number one Grand Canyon. And then there you see just moments ago, it was Grand Canyon getting their lone win here in this tournament as they went five, coming back from down two sets to none to knock off the Lewis Flyers. So let's take a look at some of the highlights through the first two nights of the University of Hawaii. And Hawaii's serving has been just terrific. Hawaii's definitely been on a roll with their serving as we see Spiros Hakas off the bat, nailing someone in the face. And then Keone Thim's been incredible coming off the bench and really bringing the heat, hitting over 70 almost every time he comes through. But Hawaii with so many service aces this entire tournament. The freshman Tred Rosenthal, Ryan, he's looked nothing like a freshman. Well, you know, this really was a great test for Hawaii and this 17-year-old freshman. How would he handle the pressure against some of the top teams in the country? And he has responded at elevated his game, helping to lead Hawaii to a 2-0 victory so far in this tournament. Alakai Todd has been just consistent all season long. He's been incredible, and over this past weekend, hitting over 600 against both GCU and Lewis, he's really found comfort in the opposite position this season, and we're seeing him reach other heights. Depending on what this guy does tonight, I would think that he may be the MVP of the outrigger. And the MVP potentially of the entire season, Spiro Tacos putting All-American National Player of the Year numbers, making it look easy. This senior has a point to prove, and no doubt he wants to be back in the national championship. All right, four ranked teams here this week, and let's take a look at the ABCA top 20 poll. Keep in mind, this poll came out on Monday. The new one will come out uh, tomorrow. Grand Canyon entered the week as the lone unbeaten and number one ranked team in the country. There you see Hawaii checking in at three and Irvine, who they'll play in a couple of minutes at number five. The rest of the top 20 as well. You'll see a number of familiar names. Lewis at number 14. And of course, every team in the Big West is nationally ranked this week. Alrighty, let's look at the top 10. Some scores from yesterday. Long Beach State goes five to beat UC Santa Barbara in a conference matchup. It was Stanford sweeping BYU on the farm. It was UCLA with a non-conference victory over Ohio State and Grand Canyon, as we just mentioned moments ago, knocking off the Lewis Flyers in five. So guys, depending on the outcome of today's match, the poll comes out tomorrow. We could see, well, we will see a new number one. It's just a matter of who it will be, Long Beach State or Hawaii. But, Ryan, you brought up a good point earlier before we went on the air that the votes actually had to go in at noon today, So right? I got clarification on that. Okay. And they actually have to 1 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow. And so a lot of coaches will watch tonight's okay. match to determine the outcome of how they decide to vote on a new number one. I think if Hawaii wins tonight, they will catapult over Long Beach State into that number one ranking. You just look at the amount of teams that they beat, the resume that they put up this weekend. I don't see how Hawaii does not go over Long Beach State with the victory tonight. I know you agree, James. I disagree with both of you, but go ahead. Yeah, no, I totally agree with you, Ryan. I think since coaches are the ones betting on this poll is Hawaii is showing such a dominant performance. And again, Long Beach State would be the second runner up for that position. But after going four and five against Santa Barbara, who is pretty low ranked in the top 20, Hawaii is just proving that when they are in rhythm, 
They are super hard to beat and they have all the tools, let alone one of the biggest blocks in the country, constantly blocking the opposite position. When you have Alakai Todd standing at six foot nine and then Trent Rosenthal, they're playing so well that I find it hard to believe that coaches aren't scared of the Hawaii team that they saw this past weekend. I wouldn't say scared, James, but I will say that there's a good chance next week in Long Beach, it'll be one versus two, whoever's one and whoever's two. But Hawaii first off, has to take care of business. This is a very good UC Irvine team. We've seen it this weekend, and the guys calling the action are gonna tell us all about it. Of course, it's Kano who's not wearing the same shirt as me today, <laughs> and C-Mac. Yeah, uh, too much intimidation uh, last yeah, night with the, uh, the similar <laughs> shirt selection. Uh, thanks a lot, Scott. Yeah, next to C-Mac, Chris McLaughlin, I'm Kanoa Leahy. And just to further uh, the conversation from the corner crew, uh, C-Mac, Charlie Wade told us coming into the week, he said, hey, look, if there is a team that goes 3-0 and this week in a tournament that features three of the top five teams in the country, uh, they should be able to stake a claim to the number one spot. But also, as Scott alluded to, uh, there's a lot of work to be done because they got to go up against the number five team tonight in UC Irvine in a true Outrigger Invitational Championship game. Yeah, and this Irvine team is, is really, really good. I, I don't think they put their best foot forward on Friday night. Uh, they certainly had a great win on Thursday but against uh, GCU, but uh, they're going to they're gonna be bringing all their guns firing, and, and they're very difficult, especially, you know, Hilaire Hanno is, yeah. is, is just, he's a handful. Yeah, Hilaire Hanno is a 6'8 junior from Pornichet, France. He's averaging over four and a half kills uh, per set. Uh, he is hitting 407. He is quite simply, he's been doing this for a few, for a few years now uh, with the Anteaters program. He is quite simply just one of the most dynamic players in the country. And so that matchup of Hilaire Hanno and Spiros Hakas is going to be remarkable to see in action tonight. It's, it's worth the price of admission. Hanno's got 53 kills already in this tournament. And he's got, at last count, he's got at least 100 different shots that he has in his arsenal. He does everything. So much fun to watch. And we don't always agree with his selection because sometimes it looks like they're just, you know, little two-handed sets over the net. But he knows what he's doing. He's a smart player. And, and uh, you know, he's also very good friends with Louis Sakanoko on the UH's team. They were uh, teammates on the junior national team in France. Yeah, they've known each other for like 10 years. Yeah. And so a bit of a reunion there. Speaking of <laughs> reunions, uh, the setter for UC Irvine, a familiar face, Brett Sheward, who was a setter initially when he came to Manoa, uh, spent four years with the Rainbow Warrior program, transitioned to Libero, and turned himself into an incredible one. Uh, he was even the AVCA All-American Honorable Mention selection for Hawaii from that libero position. He's the reigning Big West Conference Offensive Player of the Week, though now back at his original position as a setter with the Anteaters. And do you think he gave any scouting reports to uh, his players, his teammates, about these Hawaii players? Probably. He probably uh, stuffed them in his beard. <laughs> uh, did he just come back from a camping trip or what? I'm not used to seeing Shuey look like that. Anyway, he's had a great year. You know, he's, I think, number two in the country in assists per set. Uh, he runs a great offense. A little bit, a little more conservative than Hawaii's offense, but, uh, but when he's got guys like Heno on the outside, uh, all you can do is lob it up out there to him. There's a pretty good chance that Heno's going to put it away. He's got averaging over five kills per set in this tournament, so he's he's a good one. And Spurs Hawk is also averaging over five yeah. kills per set. This, this is worth the price of admission just to watch these two outside hitters. Trust me. And this isn't even a conference match yet. These are two Big West Conference members, two top five teams. This is a non-conference affair. They'll meet up in Irvine for a pair of matches in just a few weeks. Uh, so we will look forward to that. But it's going to be a lot of fun. A true Outrigger Invitational Championship match coming your way. We'll see you at first serve. Let's send it back over to the corner crew. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Yeah, looking forward to this one. Number three, Hawaii. And number five, UC Irvine. But when we come back, we're going to focus on an up-and-coming Rainbow Warrior, Richard freshman Kai Taylor. When I came on my visit here um, in October of 2022, uh, the first thing I noticed was the fans and just how much they love volleyball. Like the men's and the women's side, um, it's just volleyball community. Everyone loves it here and um, yeah, that made me want to be a part of it. Well, those are the words of Kai Taylor, who comes from a family of volleyball players. His cousin Nikki, of course, an All-American for the Rainbow Wahine. His cousin Josh, an All-American on the men's side for Pepperdine, as he and his teammates get ready for a big one, Hawaii and UC Irvine. Let's get to know a little more about the redshirt freshman, Kai. 
not having to travel or worry about any of that stuff, focusing on school and yeah, settling in, you know, moving away um, so many miles from home, and getting acclimated definitely helped and just learning the environment, like you said earlier, um, trying to understand how to play at this level and it definitely helped a lot. Um, getting to learn from the older guys. There always was a connection. You know, his name is Kai, he's got a Hawaiian name, and he uh, um, had a high level of affinity for Hawaii from day one. You know, so it's a guy that we watched a lot. Um, again, comes from a volleyball family, he's played the game at a high level his whole life, and uh, really is one of the most improved guys in our practice gym right now. And that's something um, a lot of guys, kind of the undersized guys, do the same kind of path that Colton Cowell was on, really focus on serve receive where you're an undersized guy and you're on the floor, you're gonna have to be an elite level receiver uh, and then get stronger, jump higher, hit harder. He's worked really hard in the weight room. You know, we've seen his, the speed of his serve go from like low to mid 60s up into now he can, uh, I've seen him get up into the low 70s. So he really has worked hard in the weight room and um, you know, continues to improve. All right, let's weigh in. It is sponsored on Heineken, by Heineken. Let's talk about Kai Taylor. And, and I guess when you're a freshman and you come into this program, you really have to learn how to trust the process, right? Because young guys just don't see a lot of action because of the way the program has set itself up now. But he's a guy that has seen some action this year. Yeah, and credit to him. He's kind of found a lane for himself as that serving specialist option, being able to come in there and provide that lift, knowing that that is going to be a specialized skill. He is a dynamic player, undersized, but has a great jump. Uh, not likely to see a lot of front court action, but really has depended on his serve to kind of get him into the lineup. The other thing, too, is that after Ileu Choi, he's really the backup libero for Hawaii. And so, God forbid something happens to Ileu Choi, but, you know, he would kind of be that next person up in that libero role uh, and really someone that has become a defendable force for Hawaii. Yeah, he's definitely filled in that role very well. And what I love to see about Kai is he's really enjoying the process of it. Every time we see him come in, he's not so nervous. He's excited to be in there and prove that he does have one of the whippiest serves on the team. And again, very physical for how small he is, has a great vertical, and the benefit that he has is that OH2 position could be somewhere in the future for him. He's a great passer and could fill in that role like Colton Cowell did where you kind of steady Eddie the passing and make sure you just don't make too many errors on the outside swinging wise. I think he could be a pretty good player. I was going to say, if he's anywhere near as good as his cousins, <laughs> he's going to be pretty darn good. Keep an eye out for Kai Taylor. All righty, we're going to take our final break, but when we come back, we're going to get you all set up for Hawaii and UC Irvine. Another large crowd here on a Sunday evening for number three Hawaii and number five UC Irvine. It's a non conference matchup. Kind of ironic that the final non conference matchup is against a conference team. But let's take a look because White begins conference play in a week. And this was the preseason coaches poll uh, a couple of months ago. You see Long Beach State picked to win the Big West this year. Hawaii comes in at second with a couple of first place votes, and UC Irvine garnered a first place vote. So the standings as of right now, the Big West got another win this week with a couple of matches. There you see Long Beach State won a pair. Last week actually got in the way. Irvine won a pair as well in Hawaii. Long Beach State will go at it next week at the Pyramid. Alrighty guys, let's kind of look at the Big West right now. Currently, three of the top five teams are in the Big West. We could see the top three teams could be out of the Big Who knows? But uh, this conference, it doesn't drop a level. It has been good ever since its inception. It really has, and the Big West is pretty much shown to be one of the most dominant conferences to play in. They've been in the national championship for the past four years in a row, and three of those were Big West teams as the national championship. They've just proved that they're really good at, one, recruiting. I mean, between Long Beach State and Hawaii, they have one of the top recruiting classes in the country every single season, but the competition they get to play is high level every single year. But it's also a conference that has been dominated by two teams, Long Beach and Hawaii. And so for a team like UC Irvine, who finds themselves almost consistently just on the brink, of course, last year they were able to make it to the conference championship this is a team that has a lot of revenge factor on them. They are really nipping to just kind of get back up there 
and be not only number three, but be number one. How do you guys feel about teams within the conference playing each other in non-conference matches? I think it's beneficial because you get to kind of get a feel of what the team looks like, where their strengths and weaknesses are, and it does really prepare you for the season because the Big West is one of the smaller conferences. There's only six teams. They play five opponents every single season. So you really want to get a feel of what you're going up against because, again, the hard thing with men's volleyball is only one champion gets to go from each conference and there's there used to be only two at larges now there is three it's really hard to decipher who takes that at large i think it just gives them a little bit more of an edge going into the conference really picking who the top tier team is i mean in an ideal world it would have been great to have another mpsf team in here or somebody else that we could see uh because of the fact that hawaii is going to be able to see of uh, these teams in the conference season but a lot of times it comes down to just overall scheduling and also finances and there's a lot of things that happen behind the scenes when working on a schedule it doesn't always work out where you can get other teams that you want in there so sometimes it's out of convenience more than anything else yeah it should be fun hawaii and uc irvine even if it is a non-conference matchup all right let's get ready for this one and tell us all about the leaders for uc irvine well the player to watch really has got to be hilly Orkano, one of the best players in the uh, ncaa not only you see that kills per set at 458 but that lofty hitting percentage and of course those 32 service aces also in the middle will be maxim gregorev who has has really dominated at times in the middle and will be a physical force. And of course, that familiar phrase of Brett Sheward, who is running this offense, he will be able to help to provide that uh, offensive lift for his team, but also his defensive prowess that we know he has the ability to do. He looks like a lumberjack now, doesn't he? He looks very cool. All right, let's look at the season stat comparisons. 13 and five for Irvine, 16 and one for Hawaii. Irvine actually better at kills per set, but Hawaii leads the country in hitting percentage. They've hit over 400, I think, in both matches already in this tournament, 413 overall. Blocking is pretty similar as our day the serving game though you look at Hawaii with 48 more service aces and a lot less service errors how about for Hawaii James who's for really got why we have a lot of familiar faces and of course we see Spiros Hakas every single week he's one of the top leaders in kill percentage hitting 440 on the pin adding 4.24 kills per set and then again Guillermo Voss a lofty hitting percentage hitting 584 but his blocking this weekend has been phenomenal adding one block per set and then the young freshman Tred Rosenthal leading the country in assists per set with 10.06 assists per set. And again, the service pressure as a freshman and especially learning how to jump serve once he got to college, he's a huge th threat from behind that service line. All right, time to challenge both of you with your peak performer, Ryan. You're the veteran and returning champion, so you get to go first. Who's your peak performer? Well, I just talked about my woman's duel. Haley Orhandel, the outside hitter, the lefty for Irvine. One of the best players in the gym. He can really dominate a match, and we've seen how he can provide that offensive lift, not only just by crushing balls, but he's very strategic in placing balls, sometimes with one hand in a tip shot or sometimes with two hands. He's a player that, uh, as he goes, Irvine will go. And so a lot of pressure will be placed on him. I think if he passes well, Hawaii, expect Hawaii to serve him as well to try to see if they can really challenge him. But he could be a player that could pose a lot of problems for Hawaii. How about for you, James? For me, I'm going to have Spiros Hawkins again. He's just really proven this weekend that he is one of the top outsides in the country, maybe one of the top players in the country. He has over 30 kills on the weekend in two three-set matches, and he's hitting well over 500 on the pin. He's just doing a phenomenal job, not only statistically leading this team, but also mentally bringing the team together, bringing that emotional leadership, and proving that he is the guy to watch this weekend. You know, let's get back to Brent Stewart because he's been a part of this program for a long time. One of the most well-liked and well-loved teammates by every everybody loved Brett, right? Yeah, What's it going to be like out there for these guys? It's really hard not to like Brett, someone that I played with. And again, he is just such a great guy. Really focused on school, really focused on his game and his craft. Learning as much as he can. And what I love about him, his ability to do what he is told. At Hawaii, they needed a libero. He stepped into that position for two years, did an incredible job, became one of the top liberos in the country. And then he's at Irvine leading. He is second in the country in leading the offense. And he's just 
he's such an awesome guy. It's hard not to love him. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun seeing him out on the floor and seeing Hawaii. Their service game has been unbelievable. We'll see if they can keep him up, right? Pat Garcia, we'll take a break. When we come back, the National Anthem, Hawaii Ponui, and the opening serve, number three, Hawaii, number five, UC Irvine, with Kanoa and Chris calling all the action. You're watching Spectrum Sports. Ladies and gentlemen, aloha and welcome, volleyball fans, to another exciting evening of Warrior Ball 24. Please remain standing for the singing of the national anthem and Hawaii Ponoi. And fans, please remove your hats. Veterans are encouraged to render a hand salute. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, please direct your attention to center court in recognition of a color guard detail provided by the University of Hawaii Army ROTC Warrior Battalion as we stand for the playing of our national anthem and Hawaii Ponoi. Ugh. Ladies and gentlemen, singing tonight is a resident artist for the esteemed Hawaii Opera Theater. Please welcome to the Simplify Arena at Stan Sheriff Center, Leslie Goldman. <laughs> stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the rumbles we watched were so gallantly streaming and the Good early evening, everyone. The Rainbow Hana welcomes you to Simplify Arena 
at Stan Sheriff Center on the campus of the University of Hawaii in majestic Manoa for the final night of the 28th Outrigger Resorts Men's Volleyball Invitational. Tonight's final contest of the tournament, a non-conference match, features Big West Conference members, the fifth-ranked UC Irvine Anteaters. Versus your third-ranked Hawaii, Rainbow Warriors! Introducing the UC Irvine Ant Eaters starting lineup at Libero 2, 5'7 graduate student from New Valley, Oahu, number one, Davis Lau. And outside hitter, 6'2 graduate student from Pacific Palisades, California, number two, Akil Tungutur. And Libero 1, 5'11 graduate student from Huntington Beach, California, number three, Cole Power. At center, 6'2 graduate student from Newport Beach, California, number four, Brett Seward. Also at center, six foot senior from Costa Mesa, California, number 12, Joe Carlos. And middle blocker, six seven senior from San Diego, California, number 17, Connor Campbell. And outside hitter, 6'8 junior from Portage, France, floor captain number 20, Elir Heno. And then middle blocker, 6'4 sophomore from Walnut Creek, California, number 23, Maxim Grigoriev. Assistant coaches, Ron Larson, Michael Brinkley, and Scott Static. Head coach for the Anteaters, David Niffin. Side hitter, 6'3", senior from San Diego, California, number one, Jazz Galloway! <laughs> At Lee Vero, 5'7", junior, from Waialai, Oahu, number five, Eleu Joy! And middle blocker, 6'9", sophomore from Indianapolis, Indiana. Number eight, Kurt Neusterer. And center, 6'8", freshman from Manhattan Beach, California. Number 13, Trent Rosenthal. Who got your phone? At opposite, 6'9", senior from Kailua, Oahu, number 14, Alakai Todd! <laughs> and middle blocker, 6'7", senior from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, number 21, Guilherme Voss! <laughs> 
And that outside hitter, 6'4", senior, from Mia Schmierny, Greece, floor captain, number six, Spiros Hakas! <laughs> Assistant coaches, Ku, Pono, Fay, and Chad Giesman. Associate coach, Milan Zarkovic. Head coach for your Rainbow Warriors, Charlie Wade. And ball. Rainbow Warrior Volleyball team more than exhibited its medal the first two nights of the Outrigger Invitational, which included a sweep of number one Grand Canyon Friday. Tonight's opponent, fifth-ranked UC Irvine, features the nation's kill leader and hitter Elir Heno, who averages over four and a half put-downs per set. The Outrigger Volleyball Invitational wraps up with a non-conference meeting between two Big West rivals, the UC Irvine Anteaters and the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors. And with that, we welcome you inside Simplify Arena at Stan Sheriff Center. Kanoa Leahy sitting next to Chris McLaughlin. C-Mac, take us through the Kaiser Permanente. Keys to the match. For UCI, it's Hawaii 5-0. UCI's biggest challenge might be tracking Hawaii's attackers and offense. Sometimes there can be five of those attackers at once. Hence, the Hawaii 5-0 comparison. And another reason the Warriors lead the country in kill percentage. And for UH, slow down Heno. Tough to shut down number 20, Hilir Heno. Maybe UH can slow down the hard-hitting Frenchman who seems to have a thousand shots in his bag of tricks. Two Big West Conference foes in a non-Big West Conference match, but a true championship match. Here in the Outrigger Invitational, Hawaii leading the all-time series 48-22. They met in the Big West Tournament Championship match. Hawaii won that one 3-1 last year. Hawaii has won the last 14 meetings in a row and hold the 25-9 advantage in Honolulu. Winner claims the outrigger. And if Hawaii is able to do it, they will do so in 3-0 fashion, but a tough Irvine team across the net. We're playing volleyball here on a Sunday as Anakai Todd who has just been a revelation here in 2024, gets things started with the kill. The Hawaiian Financial FCU starting lineup scrolling at the bottom of your screen. Uh, an interesting wrinkle out there on the Irvine side, wouldn't you say, C-Mac? Two setters in the starting lineup yeah. with Brett Sheward and Joe Carlos. And it looks like Sheward is gonna be hitting. He is. No William Darcy tonight. They do have this guy though, Elir Heno, 6'8", junior lefty from Pornichet, France. Leading the nation in kills, 4.58 per set. Also seventh in the country in hitting percentage, hitting 407, and one of the best serving scorers in the country. What a wrinkle David Niffen is throwing at Hawaii tonight. Unreal. Putting Brett Sheward as an outside hitter and not a setter. Alakai Todd hitting from the outside, dug up back over the net. Here, G. Voss blocked back, the cover there by Huckus. And Huckus gets the set on the right side, he gets blocked. Oh, and that touch by Elay Troy drifted over the net and pulled Spiros into the twine. So the point for UC Irvine, they were firm up front there on that sequence. Not sure that was the smartest set by Elayo Choi. Probably should have gone straight out to the left side, make an easy set, rather than a difficult side set. Max Grigorev, 6'4", sophomore from Walnut Creek, California. Serving it long, and we are tied at two apiece. Well, you mentioned the injury to Will Darcy. We just learned about it prior to first serve, David Niffen in his 12th season now having to tinker the lineup. They have not been at full power yet. They have not been loaded up with all of their weapons at the same time yet this season. And now they're gonna have to go through this match against a very tough Hawaii team, also shorthanded. As Heno is able to plug it through that Hawaii block. But he is the great equalizer, is he not? He really is. He had 60 swings the other night. And uh, Darcy, though, took a... Oh. 
big load off of him because Darcy has had 36 kills in this tournament. 19 one night, I think, and uh, 17 the other night. As Alakaita tried to curl it over the block, missed it long. No touch is called. And so you see Irvine up 4-2. Charlie Wade, 285 career victories, has his team right in a 15-match win streak. 16-1 coming into tonight. Chaz Galloway blocked the cover there by Choi. Chaz Galloway a second time, hovered a little bit, the dig by Sheward. So Carlos goes to Heno, and he does what he does so well. And that is that two-handed push dink through the block. He's got a bag of tricks. Uh, he not only will push it into the block, he'll push it in an open area of the court, totally befuddling most defenses. He's tough. He's a tough one, I'm telling you. On the French national team. Tough serve there by Brett Sheward. Alaka Ita able to go down the line. That was nifty. That's a shot I hadn't seen him use much his first four or five years, but now he's in his sixth year. He's wise in his old age. He's got all the shots now. So Alaka Ita with two kills. See what he's done in this tournament. He's been outstanding in that way all year. Middle set, that's Connor Campbell blocked back. Someone came into the twine. And it's going to be a Hawaii net violation. And so Irvine up three. A rare error here from Kurt Neustler. Getting the cable there with his forearm. And here is Heno, very difficult serve to deal with. That time dealt with pretty well by Galloway, but the back set ended up a joust above the tape, and so Alakani Todd able to cover up what was otherwise a mislocated set there by Trent Rosenthal. Well, he had to work hard for that one. Able to outduel Akil Tongutur, and now Alakani Todd will serve. Good pass there by Cole Power, middle set, that's Campbell, and it goes through the open hands of Eleu Choi. So you see Irvine appears as though they're going with the two-setter system, and Joe Carlos will hit in the front row, and Brett Sheward will hit when he's in the front row. This is really, this is strange, Canoa. Nothing strange about that. Kurt Neustor pummeling that set by Tred Rosenthal, as he has done so many times already this season. Neustor averaging just under a kill per set, but he's hitting 402 on the year. And now Chaz Galloway to do the honors, the 6'3 senior from San Diego, California. Five serving seven here in the first. They go back row, it's Hanno, and he got it down in that deep corner. They will set him everywhere in the arena. And he'll get, you know, he averages, he averages getting every other set that's put up by the Irvine setters. So he gets a lot of work every single night. Oh, Joe Carlos with the serve, and then Neustor straight down to the floor. How you like these jerseys Hawaii's rocking tonight here? They got the camo look on Military Appreciation Night. This is another one. This is one you'll probably go out and um, steal one from the locker room, just like <laughs> the retro jerseys you've already threatened to steal. <laughs> with a freebie from the service line. Nusser is a handful from back there. He, he has a, a looping, diving serve. Lots of top spin. Seven serving eight. One hand back set that time by Carlos. Punched up in the air by Voss. Here's a D set to Todd. Two blockers waiting for him. He lights it a flame. Even when Alakai Todd has two or three blockers up, he still is aggressive. I like that about him, his aggression. Timeout taken by the Anteaters. Hawaii has worked its way back. We're even Steven at eight apiece in set one. 
Welcome back. Don't miss a second of the action. Watch Spectrum Sports on the go. The Spectrum News app has the local sports you love and the news and weather that matter most to you. You can download today on the App Store or Google Play. Well, we mentioned the injuries to UC Irvine. They're without their starting opposite, Will Darcy. And also Nolan Flexen, who has missed the last nine matches due to injury. We are told that he is getting closer to perhaps making his way back out onto the floor. But this is a guy who, when he was playing, was averaging 3.3 kills per set was the AVCA NAIA Player of the Year at the Masters last season. And Kurt Neusterer hits a bomb from the service line. Played off the net there by Rosenthal. Hawkes couldn't get it down. Advantage here for the Anteaters, and it is handled from the back row. Off the platform of Todd and out of bounds, and Irvine jumps in front. But when Irvine is at some point this season, you would have to assume they will be. When they are fully staffed, uh, they are going to be a load to deal with. Absolutely. And clearly, the, the loss of Darcy tonight is the most telling one. They haven't played with Flex in this whole tournament, but, but have, playing without Darcy tonight is uh, very unusual. A 6'10 Australian national team player not being able to play tonight, it's, I was really surprised at that development. I didn't see him get hurt the other night. Yeah, it was interesting because Nolan Flexen was healthy to start the year, as you see the exchange between Milan Zarkovic and David Niffin. Uh, Niffin himself trying to uh, work a little double duty to take some perspiration off of the floor. And it looks like there may even be some blood there, so uh, that's what they're going to tend to here. But uh, yeah, Flexen started on the active roster and was playing through the first portion of the season. Uh, the match after he got hurt, he got hurt in the first meeting with USC, part of a two-match series. Uh, the second match against USC was when Will Darcy returned. So they just missed each other, and because of that, uh, UC Irvine has not had its full complement of hitters on the floor at the same time yet this year. Yeah, I'll tell you, they're going to be tough when it comes to league play and everybody's healthy, uh, either in Big West Conference play or the Big West Championship Tournament held here in Hawaii in late April. Well, this pause also gives us a chance to uh, congratulate Coach Niffin uh, because he is once again a new dad. Daughter Sophie was born three weeks ago. So congratulations to the expanding <laughs> Niffin Ohana, his fourth child. And we asked him, so Dave, how did you get away from the house? What's up with that? He said, what did he say? <laughs> he said, well, it's the only way I could get any sleep. <laughs> I had to come on the road. <laughs> So no, congratulations to the Niffin family. Nine serving eight as we return to action. Pass by Eliu Choi is a good one. And T Boss with a great swing. And we're tied at nine. Back and forth we go here in the first. This lineup that Irvine is presenting right now is going to present some mismatches to say the least in the front row. There's Rosenthal. Someone got away from him. That chicken was a little overcooked. He doesn't miss many, so we'll see how it develops. Maybe Hawaii might be trying too hard from behind the service line after an almost perfect night the other night. And Rosenthal comes into this match fifth in the NCAA in aces per set. And now Grigoriev with the serve. Back row, it's Galloway, and he's roofed. Connor Campbell shutting the door. His seventh block of the tournament, the 6'7 senior from San Diego, California. He's been touching everything so far in this set. Yeah, he's, he's a handful up there. Kim Bubble Mag, Fab 50 when he was in high school. Criminology major. And the serve by Gregorio goes long. Hawaii gets the free point. Hawaii not looking quite as sharp as we have seen in the opening set so far in this Invitational. And yet still with a chance to tie it up in this early stage of set yeah, one. They were so good on Friday night, it was scary. It's almost like this is like, play, save this game for May, don't play it in, <laughs> in early March. Tough serve there by Hawkes. So it's Davis Lau will make that cool power with the serve, uh, the set. Hawaii will play it back and Alakai Todd, good sliding save there by Power. Heno from off the net. Pancake save, Hawkes. Voss with the set. Galloway gets it home. 
Here's the pancake to pop it up right there by Hawkus. Nice set from G. Voss. Well-formed block, Chaz Galloway gets around it. Looks like there's gonna be a challenge, possibly. Yeah. Or David more Niffen. blood in the court, who knows? David Niffen holding the challenge paddle. I think he'd be challenging possibly the, uh, the pancake. We have uh, Wayne Lee. They're still looking down at the Terraflex. I'm not sure if there's still some blood trickling on the playing surface. But there also is a challenge. It's regarding the center line tape. They're also tending to the center line tape. It looks like the tape may have come undone. And so I think they're going to have to call upon the big boss himself, Rich Sheriff, the arena manager. He's going to uh, make everything right. So they're attending to that. David Niffen was holding the challenge paddle, so I'm not sure if we're going to have the official challenge now. A lot going on here so far in this match. We've had blood on the playing surface, uh, late scratches due to uh, injuries. We've got two setters uh, in the starting rotation. <laughs> Never a dull moment. See Dixon Chun, the uh, upper ref, the R1. Wayne Lee down on the floor, he'll do the reviews, and then Mark Nakashima and Randy Rubinall are the two line judges. Uh, was also a, a cool gesture by David Niffen to have Davis Lau introduced in his fifth year with the UCI program. A 5'7 grad student, libero out of Punahou School, one of two Punahou guys actually on the roster. Aiden Rigg is a freshman who uh, Coach Niffen has a lot of high hopes for uh, in the future for his career. But uh, cool, Davis Lau uh, coming through this way. One of the last times, they'll be here for the Big West Conference Tournament as well, but uh, making sure that Davis uh, gets some love from the Hawaii fans. Yeah, that was a nice gesture by David Niffen. Davis has been a, a big part of this program. He's the, uh, the backup libero, and they call him the mayor. He kind of runs <laughs> yeah. everything, you know, he runs the show. I think he organizes all the, the parties, the get-togethers. Yeah, that was great. When you greeted David Niffen on our uh, Zoom call earlier uh, <laughs> this week, you said, uh, hey, uh, where's the mayor? How's the mayor doing? And he said, oh, the mayor's sitting in the uh, back of the van right now. They were, they were in the van maneuvering through town. I know. Uh, Davis' dad, Alan, played for me back in the late 70s. And he went to Santa Barbara. Wife, Carol, also a big, a big Davis fan. So while Rich Sheriff and company were uh, patching up the Terraflex, you had Wayne Lee performing the review. The call stands. It's a point for Hawaii. An assist for G. Voss. And another kill for Chaz Galloway. Spiritos Hakas now to serve. 11-11 here in set one. Back set goes to Sheward, and he is blocked. Good cover there by Power, and then the power from the middle swing of Connor Campbell. So, so Sheward will get a set once in a while, but rarely. Connor and, and Heno will be getting most of the action. Nice dig up there by Power to keep the ball alive. And Galloway blasts it to that deep corner. Floors up the elevator shaft that time. Chad's been playing some good volleyball, especially passing and digging. He's been really good. His swing here getting better and better from the outside. Go, 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 go. 
Middle set, Campbell dug up over the net and out by Guillaume Voss. Oh, Campbell's hitting percentage this season, 427. A big number there for a middle. 14 serving 12, Heno, that one popped straight up by Huckus. And then Rosenthal out to Galloway. Heno with the save along the back line. Power with the bump set to Heno. A little touch shot, easy save there for Galloway. Backside, Todd. Oh, he had to approach that one quickly. The set was a little low. Tom Couture dug up over the net by Troy. Advantage Irvine. Heno from the back row block to get his own cover. Shuey goes left side, Tonga Tour, two hands saved there, Rosenthal, here's Todd, roll shot, drop! He took a page out of the Hilaire Heno handbook. We haven't seen that shot much from Alakai Todd this year at all. The change up, the roll shot. He mostly goes 100% all the time, but tonight we've seen him have two win a couple of jousts, and he's got that roll shot. So we're tied at 13. Oh, what, you're hitting 364. Irvine hitting 500, yet to commit a hitting error. Here's Tongu Tour off the bump set, got blocked. Shuey goes middle, Campbell blocked. Now power, high ball, bump set, tight to the net. The joust is won by Hawaii. set from power from deep, deep in the court. Bumps it up there for Tonga Tour to go up and he just gets snuffed by a three-man block, nowhere to go. And so the first hitting error of this set for Irvine. 14 serving 13, Todd. Pass there by power, middle set, Campbell block, punched up by Shuey. Here's Tonga Tour from off the net. A dig there by Todd. Here's Hockett from the back row through the block. The two-hand save power. Irvine on the attack. Heno, roll shot. Slowed down by Neustory. Knuckles it into the air. Galloway off the hands. Tongue to the save. We play on. Campbell down the line and in. What an exchange. Both sides playing some great volleyball. Keeping the ball alive with some good digging. And there's a terrific shot by Connor. They're going to kill number five already. No errors. He's hitting the mirror 625 for the night. Entered the match in 361 in the tournament. Here is Connor Dom. 6'4". Redshirt junior from Truckee, California in his fourth year with the program. He will jump serve. Pass by Huckus. Rosenthal high and away. Galloway had to adjust the left hand tip. Now we got to joust above the net again. And it's Gregoriev able to go off of Neuster and out to get Irvine the point. And the Anteaters leapfrog in front. They get to 15 first. We got a battle in Manoa. Welcome back. So here are your Outrigger Invitational standings. Hawaii 2 and 0. UC Irvine coming in 1 and 1. Earlier this evening, Grand Canyon able to get a victory before leaving the islands uh, by taking down Lewis' reverse sweep in five sets. But this is a true championship match because if Irvine were to win, Hawaii and UC Irvine would both be 2 and 1. And the initial tiebreaker is the head to head match. And so it would be the Anteaters winning the title. And of course, Hawaii, if they go 3 and 0, uh, I'd imagine the expectation would be be to see Hawaii in that number one position in the upcoming ABCA national rankings. But it's Irvine up a point here in set one. Honor Don with the serve, sliding pass there by Choi. D goes to Todd, he comes with that broad jump approach. That's set by Rosenthal, a little off the mark. Good dig by Heno. Tongu Tur, two hands it over. So the big advantage here for Hawaii. D set, Todd against a solo block. Goes off the hands and down for another kill. Halakai Todd with six put downs. He's hitting over 400. Yeah, he's playing some solid volleyball right now. Look at the stats from, from Irvine. 19 of their 28 sets have gone to two people. Connor Campbell and Halir Heno. I think we'll see a lot more action with Darcy out, flexing that in the lineup. 
Tongatour struggling right now, yet to get a kill. Here's Keone Thim. Crowd always gets a little bit buzzy when he's in to serve. Made sure he got it in that time. Middle set to Gregoria. Good diving save there by Todd. Thim sets up Hakas. Three blockers up, and he's able to tool it. Hawaii, second the lead. That's the first kill for Spiros. Watch this play by Alakani Todd at 6-9, going to the floor like it's his friend, keeping the rally alive, and Spiros does the rest. Yeah, that one plinkoed in that triple block and wound up out of play. Hawkes averaging 4.8 kills, hitting 595 in this tournament. Tongo Tour, three blockers up, and they eclipse the sun. The blocker's got a credit for the block, but how about Sione Thim just ripping that serve, forcing an out-of-system set. Oh, the grill too hot that time for Akil Tongutur. Hawaii up two. Timeout Irvine. Line. And the two top hitters right now matching each other's production. Elir Heno, six kills, three digs. Alaka Itad, six kills and two digs. Just one error between the two. Todd, the only one to have committed a hitting error so far. Living up to their pregame hype, wouldn't you say? Meanwhile, Keone Thim hyping up the crowd as he gets ready to serve. Gets it in. Heno with a perfect pass. Middle set. Gregorian, what a dig by Choi. Thim from the back row. Diving save there by Sheward. Tongu Tour over the block and in. What a shot that time by Akil Tongu Tour. Finally picks up his first kill and he does it in a very, I thought, fantastic fashion. He goes up, he's two blockers up, he just cuts it back across his body and down. Todd. Oh, there was just one blocker against him. It was a kill tunnel tour. And good luck the way this guy is grooving these days. That's yeah, a bit of a mismatch. 6-8 Todd. Tonga tour went and took his line, giving the cross court wide open. I'll well, cut you, Todd. Fourth nationally in hitting percentage coming into this match, hitting 438 on the year. We showed you his numbers in the tournament, hitting 640 coming into tonight. Gregoriev, oh, that was a hammer. Gregoriev is one guy who, in my opinion, has been the steadiest player other than Heno on this UCI team. Every night he's putting up big numbers. He's hitting 309 for the year, but I think he's hitting over 400 for the tournament. Yeah, 472 coming into this match in the outrigger. Overpass that time by Finn. Carlos going outside, it's Heno. And just dunks it to the middle of that Hawaii defense. And we're tied at 18. Charlie Wade having a conversation. I think he's gonna challenge something on the play. Was it a foot fault on the serve by Tonga Tour? That angle would lead you to believe that it very well could have been. How does Charlie see that from so far away? Yeah, that was immediate. He must have the eyes of an eagle. Far Very away close. there to, to be able to tell. I think I think it's okay. I don't think you touch any white. There are some other camera angles that we don't have access to that the officials do via the DV Sport replay system. That looks really close. It does. We're talking millimeters here. Hawaii hitting 335 CMAC. They've committed two hitting errors, just one service error. And yet it feels like they aren't putting together the, the kind of rhythmic performance that we've seen here the previous two nights in the Outrigger Invitational. That's how high the standard has been that they've set for themselves. <laughs> That's right. Hawaii came into this match in the Outrigger the previous two nights hitting 453 with 18 total aces, 17 and a half total blocks, and they had only been aced twice. And this is against the 14th and the number one ranked team in the country. Good, both of those good teams that Hawaii's put up those numbers on. It's uh, pretty amazing. I was, that Friday night match against GCU, the number one team in the country, I was 
in awe of the performance, especially from the behind the service line. Unbelievable. Putting pressure on the antelopes all night long and, and doing it consistently. Not many errors and just hitting with pace and in. Well, Charlie Wade mentioned, hey, look, this week is an opportunity for us to learn about ourselves, whether the incredible production, the incredible numbers we've been putting up here in the first segment of the season, tops in the nation hitting percentage, tops in aces, whether or not those were more of an aberration because we're going up against such high quality competition. The thing is, those numbers have only gone up the previous two nights of this invitation. <laughs> It's amazing. She's got to be pleased with the first two nights at least. I'm not sure if she's real pleased with, you know, the, the first 36 points of this match, though. She's probably not too pleased, it appears, by how long this review is taking either. So there's an angle. You can kind of see it on the monitor. Not something that we yeah. have. That's from the other side of the arena. I'm not allowed to. And so a static camera there. and. Wayne Lee going back and forth trying to see if he can tell conclusively whether or not there was a foot foul. There was not one called on the floor. That's the challenge coming from Charlie Wade. And so it has to be conclusive in order to be able to flip the call. You know, Hilaire Hino is over talking to the R1 right now. Hilaire is from Europe where they have replay systems that are um, many more cameras and more pixels, more frames per second. He's used to fast challenges being done in a second. Yeah, you see some of the players now starting to stretch out a little bit, get themselves loose and warm. Hard to stand around with these kinds of pauses. How about the crowd tonight? Yeah. It looks like, I, I would say, there's a good solid 7,000. Yeah. Maybe pushing eight. Great turnout here on a Sunday for the final of the Outrigger Invitational. No conflict with baseball today because uh, baseball played earlier, and I believe they were victorious, correct? Yeah. They steamed rice? Yeah, they, uh, they fried rice. Right. We're the first one to make those jokes. <laughs> All right, so the call will stand. Not enough evidence to overturn it. I think you can tell what Charlie thinks about that. We're tied for the 10th time here in this first frame. Tom Latour loops it over, pass by Finn. Middle set, pass! Nice pass by Tony Finn to get it all started, and then Rosenthal delivering a money set to Voss. So Hawaii inches ahead here, 19 serving 18. Tread Rosenthal with the serve. Outside it's Heno, tried to touch it off the block. Scrambling on the Hawaii side of the net. Now the roll shot by Todd, diving save by Power. High ball set, Heno. There's Rosenthal off the fingertips of the block, so Thim. High ball set to Hawkes, three blockers waiting. They're able to slow it down. Carlos going to Gregorev and got just enough to go off of Alakati Todd's blocking out for an Irvine point. Check out this dig from Cole Power, the former UCLA player, transferred to UCI, who kept that rally alive and gave Gregorev a chance to get the final kill. 19 off. How about that pass by Choi? Here's Foss. And that one too hot to handle for Tom Latour, even though he was in position for the save. That was a really good pass by Leo Choi, as you noted. He goes down low, keeps it in front of him, puts it right in the money for Rosenthal. Boss now with three kills on four swings. Hawkes to serve. That one tickles the tape. One hand punching pass there, Tom Latour. Penno! Just rising above and finding the open spots on the floor. He makes it look so simple. One of the things he does is he draws a back row player up because he has so many, he has so many great tip shots 
And she rose all sneaking up there, which leaves a wide open area one back in the back court. And uh, he just knows how to find it. Brilliant, brilliant player. Very intelligent. It's Sheward with the serve. Backside, it's Todd. And I was able to get a good piece of that on the block. Here's Finn from off the net. Tried to go deep corner. Power with the save. High ball bump set. It's Heno again. He's got nine kills, no errors here in this match. And we're still in set one. You know, but the, what he's going to signal for a timeout. At the end of the season, Canola, you know, I think the NC2A leader might be five kills per set. To have nine in the first set, unbelievable. And he's done it on 16 swings. He's in 560. He is just so hard to stop. He has the full array of shots. I don't think he's repeated one shot yet. There's a two-handed dumper. There's the one out of the back row, hitting area one. And they're doing this with a discombobulated lineup. A 6-2 with, with uh, Shuey being one setter, Joe Carlos the other setter. Those two are going through the front row, and, and uh, they, they pose some sort of a blocking liability, I would think. But you look at the score, and they haven't been a liability. They're leading 21-20. Well, even with the lineup shuffling that was forced upon David Niffin due to the late scratch to their starting opposite, Will Darcy, you got the two setters, Brett Sheward and Joe Carlos out there, both playing as hitters in the front row. We've even seen Shuey get a couple of sets, but Brett Sheward in his return to the islands, of course spent four years at the University of Hawaii, was a setter, was battling Jakob Tella, if you recall, they split time back in the 2020 season. And then made the transition to libero, turned himself and to an All-American honorable mention at that position, but he wanted to set. That was what was always in his DNA. And gets the opportunity in Irvine, makes the save there. And now Heno, that was a full swing, slowed down by the block. Choi, jump set to Todd over the block. Two-hand save, Tonga Tour. Here's Heno, the tip. Rejected. Heno's first error of the night. Yes, sir. And so Kevin Calling now enters into the match to serve for Hawaii. Tightly contested first frame. Passed by Powers, great one. And Heno hammering. 10 kills in set one for Ilir Heno. <laughs> Amazing. You think he can breathe a sigh of relief when he goes to the back row? Oh no, he gets just as many kills from the back as he does from the front. And now, Heno who is as dangerous a server as anybody around. Passed by Choi. Here's Todd. That one almost scraped the scoreboard above off of the dig. And then Tom Retour denied access. Todd jumping up next to Nusserer. Yes, That was a big point for Hawaii. Had they gone down 21-23, it would have been a tough road to hoe to get to 25. 22 all. Heno from the back row. Wrist away shot, yet another variation. He's got 11 kills. He has been a monster. It has not repeated one shot yet. 23 serving 22. Bump set goes to Todd. He's blocked and roofed. Grigorev 
in the thick of things. And it's Aloha Ball for Irvine in set one. Timeout. Signaled by Charlie Wade. Tonga Tour and Gert Gregoriev putting up a pretty solid block there. And the set was a little tight. Not a whole lot that Todd could do with it. This crowd sitting stunned at the moment. Not what they expected. And certainly with some of the injuries that UC Irvine is having to navigate through. Perhaps also adding to the unlikelihood that we'd see Irvine in this position. But here they are sitting on set point. I think the announcers are stunned too, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, sounds like it. <laughs> Let's send it over to Ryan Kalei-Suji. Hey, thanks, Kono. Well, here on the UCI sideline, the coaching staff really energetic about what they have going on here with their team. Of course, players playing uh, in some non-traditional lineups with this 6-2 offense. Not a lot of back sets that's happening on this side of the Irvine side, uh, but a lot of sets. Really, they're continuing to encourage their middles to get up, knowing that the middle blockers are going to play a much pivotal role here in this match because of the lack of the opposite presence. For the Hawaii sideline, the blockers are trying to make the difference, knowing that they don't have a D ball, they don't have a five set, and so the coaching staff is really trying to basically throw out the game plan that came in going to this matchup and trying to do a different blocking scheme, making sure their left side blockers move over to their right side. Back over to you guys. Thanks a lot, Ryan. Yeah, it's uh, it's so awkward. It's something you don't practice and practice a lot because this is very non-traditional. What's going on right now? Get Joe Carlos in front. He's about you know a six foot blocker up front, if that. This is the smallest blocking lineup that that um, Irvine can offer right now. The pass drifting tight to the net. What a set! And the associated clobbering of the ball by Kurt Neustor. Oh, Rosenthal, it helps to be as tall as he is to be able to go and get those 50-50s. 23 serving 24, it remains Aloha ball for Irvine. Thim to serve. A good serve. Back row, Heno the tip, diving save by Choi winds up out of play. And Irvine gives Hawaii its first set defeat in this year's Outrigger Invitational. 25-23. Anteaters hit 378, led by Elir Heno and his 12 kills. Set two coming up. Time now for the Hawaii Honda Dealers highlight reel and a whole bunch of first set highlights came courtesy this guy, Elir Heno for UC Irvine. 12 kills, hitting 524 on 21 sets, and it gave us 21 different shots, basically. On the other side of the net, how about Spiros Hakas? One kill, he's only been set five times out of the 42 sets, so I expect that Spiros will get more involved in this set. We'll see if Chaz Galloway re-enters. Looks like it's gonna, it's gonna, Keone Thim's gonna stay in. Not sure why Chaz has come out. Well, it was interesting, we commented Hawaii hit 310 in that first set. They only committed one service error, only three hitting errors. It just didn't feel, though, seeing that set play out like Hawaii was putting together anywhere near its A game. Yeah, I, I would agree. It's just, uh, they were just a step off. The serves weren't quite as crisp, uh, even though they only had one serve out. Passing was a little off, so they couldn't really run a, you know, the kind of offense that Tred Rosenthal would like to run. We'll see if they can get it all back together and see if the coaching staff put some plans together here for the second set. Yeah, some location issues in different stretches in that first set for Tread as well. He will get things started from the service line, but he sends it long. That is the second service error for Hawaii. And so Maxim Grigorev getting ready to serve here for UC Irvine. You talked about it. David Niffen says, hey, look, outside of Ilir Heno, Max is probably our best all-around player. He can do it all. He's played outside, opposite, middle. Look at that. G. Voss caught it in the sweet spot. 
Auntie's in the corner coming through with their they always clever do. signs. They always do. Four kills for Voss. Here's Spiros. Oh, that was a heavy heater. Schuert has to chase down the second touch. Carlos lobs it over. Voss again. Paint brushed it, but got it down anyway. That was a big time whiff right there. Even he will admit that. <laughs> the Brazilian flags show up. That thing had backspin on it. Hey, it shows up the same in the box score. That's <laughs> his fifth That's kill. Right. He's hitting 714 here, two serving one. Here's Heno, dug up by Hawkes. Rosenthal has to play it off the net. And it goes to nowhere. And so Elir Heno getting back to business. He's got 13 kills. First team AVCA All-American last year. Average 3.46 kills per set. He also had 87 aces a season ago. That is the single season UC Irvine record and the second most all time in NCAA men's volleyball. Yeah, he's, uh, he's just amazing from beyond the service line. Hawaii is luckily so far for Hawaii. They've, they've gotten him out of uh, his rotation only one serve each time, but normally he has, he serves in bunches. Here's Thim. Oh, he pulverized it. Over there paying a lot of attention to G. Fox that time. And the Thim Reaper in action. The only Thim getting the opportunity here. You see his season statistics hitting 368. Had that big match against Tusculum, if you recall, 14 kills. It's 7-22. Alakai Todd somehow came up with that save. And it's Shui who saves it on the Todd swing. Tip shot, Hino, good chase down there by Fim. Middle set, Neusterer. It rattles around on the Irvine side. Carlos going outside to Shui. Two-hand save, Hakus. Rosenthal to Todd, it was a little low, so he had to just soft touch it over. Hino off the block and down. Irvine just staying with it. Great patience by the ant eaters. Just staying really high per playing really high percentage volleyball until can probably get a ball to Hanno and then it's pretty much Hanno the hammer taking over. Here is Hanno the hammer behind the service line. Hammers it into the string. And Hawaii gets the free point. Well, when Brett Sheward transferred to UC Irvine, it was in hopes of earning the starting setter position. I'm not sure uh, if he had in mind that he'd also be playing some outside hitter <laughs> against his former team. I think, he's, I think he's enjoying every minute of it. Can you see his parents? Right, Sean and Leanne in the house. Tonga Tour. He's the Swiss Army Knife for this Irvine squad. Just filling in gaps, a guy who has played all over the floor. He was used as a libero back in 2021, was all freshman in 2020 as an outside hitter. He's plug and play. Yeah, he can do the same with Gregorov. He does the same thing, he plays all the positions. Advantage now, Irvine off the overpass, Tom Luttor, oh, he's feeling good now. Tom Luttor with three kills. And Irvine vaults ahead. And again, what caused that was a errant Hawaii pass. Let's see if he can pass a little better here. I thought the ball was out. Back row, Hawkins. That was a laser beam off the palm of Spiros Hawkins. I think Hawkins has got to get set a lot more as this match goes on. So Finn now to serve. Oh, that's a good one. What a pass by Power. Outside the set, though, drifts out of play. That might have been the pass of the tournament right there. Hawkins just ripped his serve, probably close to 70, maybe 65. And that guy right there, Cole Power, just popped it up and put it right where the setter didn't even have to move. Just stood there and set the offense. 
Six serving five. Is Thim going to bring the heat again? Took a little something off that time. Carlos gets pulled off the net. Tongu Tor, the tip shot. Oh, Hakus was right there for the save, but it goes off of Neusterer, who was trying to punch it up. And it goes down for another kill for Akil Tongu Tor. Neusterer had not touched it. Spiros Hakus was right there to get it. Red Sheward with the serve. Outside, it is Hakus blocked by Carlos, and then on to Rosenthal, as if it was drawn up. There's going to be a question right here on whether or not Hawaii went under the net on the previous play of that. Let's see if uh, Nithin's going to challenge or not. Now he's talking to Wayne Lee right now. No challenge, it appears. Wayne Lee let him know there was not an interference in that under line call. So seven serving six, it's a new steward. That's a good serve. In fact, it's an ace. Well, Kurt has brought the lumber here to the arena tonight. He's got three kills, a couple of them emphatic, three blocks, and how about now two service aces for Kurt? Oh. A little too much lumber. Got, too much lumber. Got under that a little bit. Pass by Finn, tight to the net. One hand set, Voss. And the improv works for the Rainbow Warriors. And see whether or not Rosenthal was over the net or whether Voss is over the net. One of those two plays is going to be called. Looks like Wayne Lee's discussing with Nixon Chung to find out if, in fact, one of those two players was over. We'll take a little the net cam will show us right here. No, that ball's 50-50, and that ball's 50-50. Yeah, that looked good from that angle. If they got challenged, he's going to lose the challenge, I'll tell you that, according to that camera angle. So we will play on. Hawaii gets the point. Voss gets the kill. He has six. With no errors at 7.50, and now Tred Rosenthal will serve. Three-time Big West Conference Freshman of the Week. What a serve it was. Out of system here. Bump set goes to Heno. Sliding save there by Choi. Here, Todd blocked right back into his lap. Elir Heno doing everything here this evening in Manor. He is a one-man wrecking crew tonight. And Seth Rosenthal. Well, look how Todd gets a good swing at it, but just too much. Ant Eater block. Gregorev with the serve. Rosenthal had to chase that one down. Todd blocked. The cover by Hakus. Voss joust above the tape. Shui jump set. Heno off the block and into the pin. He can do no wrong. He's got 15 kills. One error. In 26 swings. He's got his Superman cape on right now as we speak. Question is, will his arm hold up all night? Rosenthal has to chase down that second touch. Set tight to the antenna, and it's going to be a net violation called against Spiros Hakas. Irvine gets the point, and they lead 10-9. Things just a little ragged on the Hawaii side of the net. That's an overpass. Shuey goes middle to Campbell blocked. Here's Carlos going middle to Campbell blocked. 
and roofed. Gonna be a double contact call. David Niffin arguing the point. So interesting to see the two setters sort of rotating back and forth. You had Shuey with one set to Campbell and then he came up with the cover after the first block and then Carlos with the second set to Campbell. And they called the double contact there, C-Mac. What'd you see? Yeah, I thought it was a double. It looked like he rolled up his arm in the first one. Floor captain Elir Heno getting clarification from Dixon Chun. And the crowd growing more and more impatient here with some of these lengthy officiating discussions. <laughs> so the booze turn into uh, uproarious applause. <laughs> and we're tied at 10. Oh my goodness. A smoke show from Hawkus. Hanno blocked him. Oh, he is human. Olakai Todd in the middle of things on the Hawaii side of the net. Manoa Roofing Company. Reporting for what a, duty. What a sort of tongue to Just had to get out of the way. And there, Voss and Kalakai Todd putting that back in his face. That was 69 miles an hour. It felt and looked faster than that. Rosenthal to Voss. Blocked. Pumps up in the air by Hawkins. How about that set by Rosenthal? Thim is dug up by Sheward. Over the net. Voss deposits it. Timeout by the Anteaters. Spittles, Hawkins. Firing missiles from the service line, leading to good things for the home team. Welcome back. Well, there's a legend in the house, the great Dave Shoji, with his master's jacket taking in the action. Charlie Brand, who calls the color for you see Irvine when he's back home? So a pair of legends he's hanging just out. He's just over here for the weekend. Yeah, Charlie was with him for Dave's first, uh, second and third national championships in 82 and 83. Sure, pushing that set quickly out to that pin. And Heno able to do what he has done now 16 times. Get it home for a UC Irvine point. Do you think Chewy always knows where Heno is? I would say it's a safe bet. And if he doesn't, shame on Chewy. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Thim. Oh, he jousted with his former teammate there above the net. Heno, tip shot. Easy pickings there for Choi. Back row, Hawkins, his tip sniffed out by Carlos. Heno blocked. Cover there by Cole Power. Chewy right back to Heno. And he missed the floor wide. That time got a little too cute with it. And the crowd extra boisterous as they cheer a rare error by Elir Heno. He has a connection to the, the UH men's volleyball team through the fellow Frenchman. That's right, Louis Sapinoto is. Kevin Pauling serves it into the twine. Both hailing from France, playing some uh, youth international level volleyball together. They, according to Louis, have known each other for 10 years. Yeah. And Louis said if he gets into the game, he will not be speaking English to him. <laughs> it's going to be all French. 12 serving 13. Good pass there by Hawkes. Back row, Spanos. Oh my goodness gracious. Grease, lightning, and thunder. And this was something else. Even Gregorov, who's a very versatile middle blocker, could not get there in time. So Spiros now showing some signs here of awakening in this second frame. 14 serving 12. Todd sends it across. 
Tonga Torres, kind of a push swing that time, dug up by Choi, and Alakai Todd jumped too early and still found the floor. Hawaii gets the 15 first. It doesn't always have to look pretty. Alakai Todd now with eight kills to lead the Rainbow Warriors. Welcome back. Scores from elsewhere around the UH Athletics Department. Right over at Les Murakami Stadium, Hawaii. Cooked rice, 12-1, the final score. It's obligatory. It's obligatory to describe it that way. <laughs> Hawaii now up 2-1 in that series. They'll have the fourth and final game uh, tomorrow, just after 2 p.m. is the first pitch. Rainbow Wahine softball over Cleveland State, 6-1. And Rainbow Wahine water polo falling to Cal, 9-8. Hawaii with a big matchup with USC coming up shortly. And Zalakai Todd serves it out, out of the timeout. Hawaii now with five service errors compared to three for UC Irvine. And Connor Dom subbing in to serve and just waiting for a volleyball. <laughs> that he didn't get a chance to be an outside hitter tonight. Interesting, you're right. He's a 6'4". They really like him in there as a serving sub, that's for sure. Free chance here for Irvine. Gregorov is dug up by Hawkes. Rosenthal outside, Thim! Oh, what a cover by Troy just to keep the sequence alive. Gregorov is back finger by Kurt Neustor, who was up there next to Tred Rosenthal. One-handed, just a stab at the ball a little quickly. That's one of the things that Leo does best. He's got quick hands, quick reflexes. Kurt Neustor with four blocks here in this match. Hawaii has seven as a squad. 16 serving 13. A good one by Thim. Oh, the set off the mark. A free chance here for Hawaii. Rosenthal back row thin. The tip sniffed out by Shuey. Tango Tour had to soft touch it over. And then over on two goes Tread. And the largest lead of set two for the Bows. UC Irvine knew that was coming. They had people there in line, but just could not put it down. That came over a little bit too quickly from Tread. Great shot. And we're gonna have oh, no challenge. It was a long discussion. David Niffen talking with Wayne Lee. I think he may have had a few words to say, thinking that Tred Rosenthal guided that ball over. That was a fiery serve there by Thim. Shuey with the swing, Thim the save. Rosenthal outside, Hawkes up the ladder. And down the shoot it goes. signals for a timeout. What previously was a not so fluid performance by Hawaii. Starting to find some rhythm. Well, Spiros Hawkes held to just one kill on five swings in the first set. Coming alive here in set two, C-Mac. Yeah, and finally giving him some more attempts. And that'll help. It obviously helped when he went back to serve. He was all, all warmed up with that serve because he just absolutely demolished a couple of serves that he had. See, his offensive numbers also has five digs and a block. Keone Finn serving out of the timeout. Sends it out. Hawaii had been on a 5-1 run. And now Brett Sheward will serve. The grad transfer from Newport Beach, California, pursuing his Masters of Finance at UCI. And I happen to love the beard, by the way. Yeah. Predictably. Being a fellow beardy. Hawkes. And he got the touch. Spiro starting to groove a little bit. Five kills for him. We got two players on the floor who are most certainly in the conversation for National Player of the Year to this point in the season. It's Spiro's Hawkes on the Hawaii side and Elir Heno on the Irvine side. I would 
100% agree. Shuey going to Grigorev. How about that quick snap of a swing by Max Grigorev. Shuey just fearlessly setting that 31 set. Oh my goodness, from like the 12 foot line. Make that 13 foot line. Hawaii's block, completely off guard. Good pass there by Thim. Voss block, the cover by Rosenthal. So Thim high balls it to Todd. Three blockers up. And it doesn't matter. Alakai continues his winning ways. He just finds a way to get through, over, around, blocks, two man, three man, doesn't matter. What a year he's having. So happy for him. Six years, he's been waiting his time. Finally got his chance. Nine kills for him. He leads Hawaii. Shuey going quickly outside to Heno. Oh, that was an absolute bomb, but he missed the court wide. Point Hawaii, they're up six. Rare error by Mr. Heno. Well, that uh, got that courtside front row. Got them shaking in their boots a little bit. 21 serving 15. Grigorev. Nice little connection there, Shuey and Grigorev. David Niffen pointing out, hey look, we have had guys who are playing positions or playing at the Division I level of NCAA Volleyball for the first time this year. He said, hey look, Shuey, he was a setter obviously, but it's been a long time since he has been a full-time setter. Will Darcy waiting in the wings behind Francesco Sani last year. As Hawkes tried to cut it cross court and missed it wide. Point for UC Irvine. Front row sub right now for Irvine. A freshman who hasn't played much this year at all. And, and on Kariaku playing front row for Joe Carlos. Yeah, in fact, his first appearance of the season. Well, he out of system. Oh, that back bump set goes over the net. Shuey goes middle. Connor Campbell dug up by Thim. Rosenthal to Hakas over a double block. Punched up in the air by Grigorev. Heno going to try to time it. And he misses the floor, but gets the touch. Irvine creeping back in to within three. And Charlie Wade's going to signal for a timeout. You know, the sign of a great player is that is you can bounce back from disappointment. He had a disappointing hit out and disappointing stuff on him. Then he comes right back and hits a ball like that. It gives him a very, very important side, side out to stay in this second set, forcing Charlie Wade to call an unusual timeout. Charlie doesn't call many timeouts, by the way. He likes to have his team work their way out of problems and figure it out themselves. But this time, uh, I guess he figures the coaching staff might have a few things to say that might help. Well, we are told Ryan Kalei Suji has a few things to say. What's up, Ryan? Hey, hey thanks, Gunnar. Well, head first, first off, head coach Charlie Wade really talking to his server, saying, hey, guys, take a breath. Slow it down, especially when you're serving. He feels the team is kind of rushing into this game. He wants to slow things down a little bit. He's also taking a lot of time to talk to Trent Rosenthal about his uh, setting selection. At times, showing him the stat sheets, just showing him how much he's actually distributing the ball and who he's tending to go with, trying to get him a little more comfortable with understanding where he's making these uh, decisions on offense. And the same thing goes for the UC uh, Irvine sideline. Niffin really talking to both of his setters about their shot setting selection as well. So both coaches spending a lot of time talking to their setters about both managing their offense. Back over to you. Thanks a lot, Ryan. Yeah, just when it looked like Hawaii had found that traction, right? Started to look more rhythmic and fluid in transition and in some of the other aspects of the game. Uh, all of a sudden hitting another rough patch here, C-Mac. Yeah, we have got to give a lot of credit to UC Irvine for stepping up their game, wrapping things up and playing just a little bit better. And here's a tough server. This is a tough out right here. Max Gregoria, he's a guy that uh, I voted on for my all-tournament team. He's just such a great all-around player. He's played opposite, played uh, middle. He's played on the outside. Jack of all trades. 18 serving 21 out of the timeout. Here's Hakas. And he gets it down. It was one on one. The two Player of the Year candidates meeting above the net that time, and Hawkus winning that round. Oh, it's fun to watch that. Two guys eyeball to eyeball right there. A 
22 serving 18. Hawkins made sure he got it in that time. Campbell! It returns to sender. Chaz Galloway reinserted back into the game. I think he's in on that block as well. Yeah, he jumped in there and helped out G Voss. That's now eight total team blocks for Hawaii in this match. Hawkes putting a little extra chili pepper water on that serve. Here's Heno, and just right through the wall of hands put up by Hawaii. That was a pretty big block, too. 6'9", on Kai Todd. 6'7", G. Voss. They both almost three blockers up. And Heno finds a way to go high hands, deep. Goes just how high to hit it, too, to catch a finger or two. And so here is Andon Kiriaku. 6'2", freshman from Ajax, Northwest, Ontario. Also, Davis Lau on the floor. The Punahou alum in his fifth year with the program. 19 serving, 23. And Hawaii has a little ball here in the second. And look at this crowd standing up. C-Mac, I know you love that. Well, they're going to find some way to light a fire on this Rainbow Warrior team. The Warriors are going up against this unorthodox. Yeah, that's the kind of match it has felt like. Yeah. A bit disjointed. Hawaii trying to close the deal, though, here in set two. Carlos backside. Heno, deep touch. Gets down. But a net violation is called against Irvine. And Hawaii takes set two. And we are all square here in this championship match of the 28th Outrigger Invitational. Hawaii and Irvine, three versus five. Big West versus Big West. It's 1-1 at the intermission. for UC Irvine has been a one-man wrecking crew through the first two sets. The Frenchman has been nearly unstoppable. He's already got 18 kills for the first two sets, hitting 361. He's only made five attack errors all evening long, and he has been worth the price of admission. Tied at a set apiece at intermission. Hawaii dropped the opener and came back into set number two. Hi, everybody. Scott, James, Ryan. We saw Irvine come out with a 6-2 offense, a two-setter system in that first set, and it seemed to give Hawaii problems in that opening set. They weren't ready for it. It did. I think it threw Hawaii off guard, and it's definitely nothing that they scouted. The big benefit that they had is Hillier's so able to move in that back row and hit that D-ball, hit the 40, and hit the regular big that Hawaii's blockers can't just commit to the middle and the outside. They still have to be patient, and I think they've been flustered with that. Well, I think the overall feeling for Hawaii is just frustration. You can see it on the players. You can see it on the coaching staff. Uh, this is a team that on paper, when you see who's what's being rolled out there, uh, Hawaii should be dominating, and yet they're not because of the fact that they're still having to make adjustments. I mean, sometimes when they're sending that back set on the five, it's more like row shots that Shuren is hitting over free balls, and then Hawaii still having uh, trouble committing. I think one of the players that really has come to play is Guillermo Voss, who has just been a force at the net as well as offensively. The senior really proving to be that force right now with seven kills, hitting 583. Yeah, Guillermo's doing an incredible job, and I think there was one point where he flipped the switch in the second set, got flustered where he got tooled, and then just came out dominating on the net, being a little bit more aggressive and pressing, getting monster blocks, and we see a little bit more up behind his swing tonight. You know, another thing that we're seeing is still that second outside position, kinda, I guess you could say, up for grabs. Chaz Galloway got the start, and then Keone Thim came in when it was tied at 15, finished that first set, and then started the second. Your, your thoughts on the strategy? I mean, I was actually kind of surprised that Charlie Wade made that switch that early on because I don't think there was really much fault on Chaz's part. Trent Rosenthal is struggling tonight. I mean, his sets are very tight. I think there's a lot of adrenaline running through the freshman veins, and the hittable balls right now for the outsides are very tough. So I wouldn't put that necessarily on Chaz Galloway. So I was actually surprised with that move. I agree with you, Ryan, and I was happy that Chaz Galloway got back into the game 
because I think he's one of the more steady passers for this Hawaii offense. And Irvine is doing an incredible job. They don't have any aces, but they are putting so much service pressure with only four errors. They're going to need their serve receive to be good in order for to run their middles because their middles are going to be huge tonight for Hawaii. Ryan, adjustments for both sides. What do they need to do to win? Well, I just think someone else needs to turn, turn it on for Irvine. I don't think Hendel can carry this team all the way through. And for Hawaii, they've got to just calm down. I think they're trying too hard. There's frustration on there. they got to just try to make a better job with blocking assignments and being more aware of their hitters in front of them. Yeah, Hawaii's just going to have to play a little bit more clean and trust their offense like they have done all weekend. All right, sounds good. Hawaii, Irvine tied at a set of peace. We'll take a break, come back and have more from the corner. Welcome back here to the Pizza Hut match statistics. So what are you able to respond in that second set, C-Mac? Taking a 25-19, uh, what story do the numbers tell? Well, the two biggest things that jump out for me is that Hawaii's dominating at the net with eight blocks to three. The other one is service aces. Hawaii with two, zero for Irvine. But the biggest thing is that uh, Hawaii's normally getting a lot more aces. They got eight one night, 10 the other night in the first two nights of this tournament. So they're used to getting some easy points here and there. Tonight, Irvine's been passing the ball pretty well and not keeping and keeping Hawaii from getting service aces. Uh, do you agree with Ryan Kalei Suji's assessment that uh, Elir Heno uh, can't necessarily carry the load the full length of the match here? Irvine's going to have to get some offense on a consistent basis from some other source if I they're going to win tonight. I would totally agree. He's absolutely right. Um, you know, he's hit the ball 36 times already. You now we know he can hit 60 times, but will it be as effective uh, as it was on night number one? Last Thursday, you know, he's, he's had a tough week where he's hit a lot of balls. But, of course, he's capable of doing it. He, he's shown that he, he can be durable. We'll find out soon. But, I, you know, I do think somebody's got to step up and, and, uh, and help out. My guess is Connor Campbell will get a few more sets. Gregorov will get more sets. And clearly, Tonga Tour, who's hitting 077 right now, will get some more sets. Set three underway. It's Hakas getting the first set on the Hawaiian side. And he has found his groove here. Seven kills now for him. Had just the one kill in set one. The Spiro step in game here since. Yeah, he only got five attempts in the first set. He got 10 in the second set. My guess in this third set, he'll be set as much as Rosenthal can get it to him. Speaking of Rosenthal, he serves. Middle set, Grigorev swiping dig. There by Thim keeps the sequence alive. And then Thim gets airborne to try to fight off that Heno hit. But it ends up in a Lear Heno kill. Good effort there by Tread trying to chase down the second touch. Kill number 19 for Heno. Well, if you're just joining us, you see Irvine playing shorthanded. Will Darcy, they're starting opposite. He was hitting 400, averaging 3.6 kills per set through this tournament. A late scratch due to an injury. They're also still without Nolan Flexen, dynamic outside hitter who has missed the last nine matches. This is the tenth, in fact, that he's been out with an injury. Good recovery there by Hawkes off the touch. Little joust above the tape. Cover there by Choi. Here's Hawkes again, blocked back. Finn on the scene. Rosenthal going right back to Spiros. Roll shot off the block, and then it goes table tennis atop the net. Back on the Hawaii side. Here's Hawkes. Blocked and roofed. Oh, man, what a rally. What a great hustle by Connor Campbell there. He was there late. But even the late block sometimes is a good one. There's Campbell getting there late. You see that he closed the seam? Not easy to block Spiros Hawkes for Connor Campbell. Hats off to you, man. That was a great hustle. Yeah, Hawkes getting a multitude of tries there. It's a lot of vaulting on one sequence. We haven't seen the big set in, in a while. I'm surprised to see that. Maybe we'll see Rosenthal set a little more out of the back row, either to Johnny Pham or Hawkins or if Chaz Galloway, if he comes back in. Coming back to Irvine, though, due to the injuries and unorthodox rotation here for David Niffen, where he has his two setters, Joe Carlos and Brett Sheward, out on the floor and each lining up as hitters when they're in the front row. What a serve there by Grigorev. Out of system, it's Todd. 
tried to lay into it, sends it out, point for Irvine. And David Niffen telling us this week, he said, hey, look, we don't have the traditional A side versus B side dynamic in the gym. We just don't have that kind of depth. Our roster isn't full of those kinds of players to be able to even that dynamic out in the practice gym like some of the other top ranked teams in the country. It's part of the reason why you're seeing the 6-2 system going on right now. Todd with the swing. Dug up back over the net. Played by Choi as he was straddling the sideline. Here's Voss. That set a little low. Saved by Shuey. Penno is blocked. Covered there by Carlos. Shuey going middle to Campbell. One hand save. Thin long run for Rosenthal. He got there, but to no avail. And he takes a few extra moments laying face down on the Terraflex. Crowd applauding the effort, but also sitting uneasy as Irvine is off to a 4-1 lead here in the third. Got to give a lot of credit to this scrappy, resourceful, and eater team. And that serve goes wide, away gets bailed out there. Yeah, uh, Irvine, they don't have any service aces, but they've been applying pressure from the service line. Uh, they are getting out blocked by Hawaii, two to one and yet their block has gotten a slew of touches throughout this match. So they've been effective even if the statistics wouldn't necessarily tell those stories. There's Heno, how high up he gets. That point of contact is way up in there. Yeah, he's got, he's got a, a good vertical and he reaches high. The 20 kills for Elie Heno, the flying Frenchman. And we're going to have a foot foul. Well, Charlie challenged for a foot foul earlier in the match. No challenge needed that time as Joe Carlos stepped on the end line. Let's take a look. That one looks pretty obvious. G. Voss serving for Hawaii. Outside it goes. No blockers up. It is Brett Sheward for the kill. I guarantee you the strategy there was leave Sheward alone because we've got to worry about these other players and Sheward's not an outside hitter by nature. <laughs> He's making a name for himself now though. And Heno sends it out. So Heno yet to get really calibrated from the service line, fortunately from Hawaii's perspective. Now Alakai Todd taking the trek back behind the end line to serve. Four serving six. See the service error numbers. Hawaii with a pair of aces. Both courtesy Kurt Neustewitt. Overpass forced there by Power. Outside, it's Thim. Down the line and in. Oh, he packs a punch, doesn't he? Oh, it's hard to see where that landed. It happened so fast. That definitely does that land in. Right on the white line. And we talk about Alakai Todd biding his time, waiting in the wings. Keone Thim's done a semblance of that as well. Absolutely. Backside, no blockers up. And sure, right now, it's hitting lines for him. He may not be an outside hitter by trade, but if there are no blockers in the area, that's one way to make it work. I guarantee you, this was a strategy by Irvine to counter what Hawaii's doing. Hawaii's saying, ah, oh, let's not worry about a right side presence of UCI. Let's just go out to the middle and to the, and to the Irvine's left side, and we will uh, focus our attention there. And as soon as the attention's got focused there, whoops. Here comes Shuey, bearing the last two hits. And this is not what the fans were anticipating with the return of Brett Short. But Irvine up two, outside it's Thim, tried to go two hands, and Brett Sheward with the rejection. Is he going for MVP or what? What's going on here? You can solve that one. Rosenthal, D set to Todd, blocked, but it goes beyond the end line. And Hawaii gets the point, kill number 10 for Alakai Todd. I think, I think Ryan Shuji 
uh, really expressed it well when he said, there's frustration going on on the rainbow side of the court. Yeah, interesting moment there. You had Wayne Lee going over to the Irvine bench warning them to not creep onto the playing surface so far. And in fact, was sort of coming to the defense of a fan sitting at the end of that front row as Keone Finn just fires a BB. Can't see the radar gun, but I guarantee you that was 70 plus on that one. It was such a rocket, the radar gun, it's just hanging there, it's off kilter. <laughs> Another speedy effort. Bump set, here's Shuey. Saved by Choi. Outside, Huck us up the elevator shaft. And lowers the boom. Big Hero 6 with the Greek letters SP, Big Spiro 6. That's right, he's wearing jersey number six. He used to wear it when he was a youth player. His dad wore it when he played. It's eight even. Well, here's a blast from the past, Alan Hackbart. Entertained crowds for so many years, several years ago, and he still has the moves. <laughs> he does. Oh my goodness. The rubber band man, as he was uh, affectionately referred to. <laughs> Defying father time <laughs> and still entertaining the masses. Eight serving eight, Keone Fim out of the timeout, sends it across. Middle set, Gregor at the tip, good save there, Neusterer. Right back to Neusterer, goes Rosenthal, pinballed around on the Hawaii side. Rosenthal with the swing, and the kill! Oh, what a work play! By Craig Rosenthal! Oh, my! Hawaii has scored the last four. Block just didn't even get time to get up. They were surprised by that. Wow. Another explosive serve and miscommunication on the Irvine side. Until the Kyoto Finn can disrupt a passing formation in a heartbeat. Grandpa Mike, Grandpa, Grandma Kule. Gotta be proud. They're probably watching from somewhere, right? From Hilo, maybe? Mike Walden and Thule. Two aces for Keone Finn. Entered this match 12th in the NCAA in aces per set. And just adding to it. He is cooking with Kiave from the service line. Well, David Niffen has already used one timeout. I think he's waiting for the media timeout to use the second one to cool off this hot server. 11 serving eight. Still dotting it from the service line. And the block on Brett Short. Hawaii of four. Timeout and eaters. Keone Thim. Sparking the fans and his teammates. Seven straight points for Hawaii. Oh, Thim is him here tonight from the service line. Some seeds, C-Mac. Oh, man, he's just bringing the heat time after time. He's not getting an ace. He's forcing an overpass. I think right now, it looks like Irvine's still going to go with three passers. They've moved Shui back just a little bit. they got three and a half passers now. I think this, you should have all four guys back there, but just my opinion. This guy has completely changed the vibe here in this third set. Took a little something off that time. Carlos going outside, and it's an out hit there by Tungu Tur. No touch. Point for Hawaii, but David Niffen is immediately grabbing the challenge paddle. I think there was a touch. 
Kurt Neusterer, who was uh, very honest in the first night of this tournament and admitted to a touch in that match against Lewis, uh, mums the word seemingly on the Hawaii side this time around. I want you to watch. Let's see. Ooh, hard to tell there. It would be Rosenthal who challenged that Tonga Tur. Yeah. He quickly ran into the huddle. I didn't see any fingers bend back, did you? Usually you see a finger bend back or you see the flight of the ball change. Oh, yeah, I think you got it right I think, there. I think you're right. You know, when you got frying pans for hands, it's hard to not <laughs> get a touch. But I think you're right. Yeah, he got, he got it. Yeah, you can see his, his uh, left ring finger and pinky. I think they both got bent back. But we have thought in past iterations that we have seen things that have not correlated with the uh, ultimate conclusion sometimes on these replay challenges. Well, I watch your basketball calls. I, I notice you get pretty much 100% of the replays right. Well, in, in my mind, <laughs> of course. <laughs> What are you doing your day off? You finally get a day off coming after all these, like 11 days in a row of calling like nine different sports. You get a day off tomorrow, so what are you gonna do? I'm going to the UH baseball game, baby. <laughs> Early start time for the fourth and final game of the series with Rice, just after 2 p.m., the first pitch. So uh, yeah, I'll see you down there. I'll bring the beers. <laughs> oh man, I can't believe you're going to the stadium with your day off. You're a true loyal. <laughs> UH fan, that's for sure. Well, what about you? Uh, Hawaii volleyball going on the road, Long Beach State. Ooh. As Hawaii starts Big West play, and they are going to reverse the call and call the touch. And so Tonga Tura gets the kill, Irvine gets the point. But uh, how are you? How will you be uh, taking in the Long Beach State matches next week? On TV. <laughs> I'll be watching. ESPN Plus, I think, they have it on. Nine serving 12. And there's new story. It wasn't a clobbering, but he was able to put it in the right spot on the floor. I like that set, though. He's going a little bit of contra flow there, running toward that front left and back setting to Nusra. Nusra only had one guy up, and he, luckily, Rosal set it high enough so Nusra could go over the block. 13 serving nine. And that just drifts along. Neusser thought he had it. And he was service error number seven on the night, same as Irvine. Hawaii with the five aces, all five aces coming from Neusser and Keone Thim. Two aces and three aces respectively. And now Akil Tonutur. With the serve, oh, he puts some extra velo on it, and it's an ace. And don't look now, Irvine back within two. The first ace of the night, good run up, good top spin. Another tough serve, good pass there by Choi outside. Hawkes rising high. Bit of a mismatch out there with him going up against Joe Carlos on the outside. And now we have a substitution for Hawaii as Luis Sakonoko enters the match. And not as a serving sub here. He comes in for Alakai Todd. I think it's because Alakai has been struggling on the left. So this may just be a one rotation play here. We'll see. Rosenthal to serve. It's a good one. Shui sends it to Grigorev off the fingertips of the block. The save by Thim. Rosenthal high balls it to Hawkes. Oh, and he gets stuffed. And Hawkes grimacing as he falls down to the floor. He's sort of shaking out that hand. You see the wrapping around the wrist and thumb area. On that right hand of Spiros Hawkes. And he's grabbing at it. Uh, looks like he's it's probably a, a bad sprain he got up blocking at some point. I didn't see that on his thumb the last two nights, did you? Just appeared tonight, so he probably got it in, in practice. 
or maybe one of the matches, but he's definitely in pain, that's for sure. Grigorev in on that block, that's his fourth. Overpass is forced. Outside, Heno. Oh, some high cheddar in the direction of Trent Rosenthal. And Heno, good bit of sportsmanship there, checking on the 17-year-old setter across the net. Yeah, that was classic. Great shot by Heno. Looked like he's gonna go across court, and then he just twists and turns, goes down the line, catches Rosenthal off guard. Irvine serving to try to tie this third set. Overpass by Thim. Swiped around a little bit. Now Anteater's on the attack. Good punch-up save there by Thim. High ball set goes to Hawkes. Diving save by Shuey. Well done. Carlos cross court to Heno. Through the block and out. And so a kill for Heno, who is talking to the R1 Dixon Chun. Not sure what he was upset about. Either way, when the dust settles here, it's Irvine and Hawaii tied at 14. Heno with 22 kills. This match tied at one set apiece. Hawaii passing with four receivers right now. Pass by Hawkes, tight to the net again. One hand set, Voss. Oh, nice job there by Hawaii just to keep the sequence alive. Heno, hand comes them. So Heno Heat gets Irvine to 15 first. 23 put downs for jersey number 20. Well, moments ago it was Hawaii up four when it was 13-9. Irvine now has scored four in a row. They lead 15-14 here. Pivotal set three in this Outrigger Invitational Championship match. Out of the timeout, Rosenthal going outside. Sapa no Louis, Louis with his first kill. Instant offense for Sakonoko. Oh, he loves being in there, going up against his fellow freshman, Hilaire Heno. <laughs> They're kind of peeking at each other through the net. <laughs> Middle set, Campbell denied by G. Voss. go all the way through the front row here for Alakai Todd, not just playing on that left side, but he's now playing middle front. 16 serving 15. Oh, and that one goes long, 71 miles an hour by Hawkes. And we're tied again. Rosenthal goes to Sakonoko on the opposite side. May have been an out ball played by Tongu Tour. Another kill for Louie. And Hawaii up by one. Charlie Wade going to the bench a couple of extra times here. Kai Taylor coming in as a serving sub. Here's Heno. Just unstoppable. 24 kills now for Elir Heno. Hitting well over 400. You know, two blockers of the block it was not well formed though. A little bit ragged. And it's Heno to serve. Serves it out. He has not found the calibration here this evening. And serve receivers, breathe a sigh of relief. If they can get away with Keno just serving one time, they feel like they've won that battle. Here is Sakonoko. He can do some damage from the service line. The high toss. And it's an ace. Right on cue. Should have seen Charlie Wade's reaction with the fist pump. A little bit reminiscent of, of Sakonoko's nine aces earlier on this year. 
I guess was Tusculum. And tied UH single match record with nine aces. That was against Emmanuel. But he follows it up with the service error, trying to pull the string. Actually, I'm, I'm surprised that Hawaii hasn't gone to that short serving strategy tonight just a little bit. Especially when Helen's in the front row. They can come up to the net, have to pass the ball, can't get an approach. That's how uh, Lewis was so successful when they played against UC Irvine. They served that short ball inside the three meter line a lot. Another tough server here, Connor Dom. Crowd trying to get into his ear, and maybe they did. Hawaii gets to the 20 point mark. Last five points, the toughest ones to get. But the guy who was able to turn this third set around, a little smirk on his face, Keone Thim. What a serve. Well, the set a little off the mark. Pinballed around, Tongu Tur gets a swing out of it and tools the block. Oh, it looked like Hawaii had the point, but Irvine able to scoop it off the Terraflex. And just simply give that point to Cole Power. He put up a magnificent pass off of another County Thim rocket. Meanwhile, Davis Lau back on the floor in place of Cole Power. Here's the D set, Sakonoko roll shot. The save by Lau. Heno from the back row, dug up by Choi. Sakonoko lays out, made contact, but couldn't conjure up the save. And we are tied at 20. Brett Sheward with the serve. Two hand pass there, Thim, middle set, no stop. Straight. Picks up his uh, fifth kill on seven tries. Probably needs to be set a little bit more. That's meager compared to the 96 sets that have been set. Mooster with the serve. Heno steps up on the pass. Outside. Ball rattles around on the Hawaii side of the net. Here's the middle set, Gregorian, that one drifts out. No touch up front, Hawaii gets the point, they're up two. Did you see G. Voss pull his hands down there? I, I think he pulled him down to get out of the way, he didn't want to get tooled. You could tell that was an awkward set, awkward approach. Smart play. This has been a gritty battle here in set three. Heno with a nice pass. Heno gets it from the back row, the tip. Pancake save by Sakunoko. Thin from the behind the line, and it's dug up by Shuey. Here's Heno again. And unfortunately, I think David Nippon's going to pull out a challenge on the pancake by Sakunoko. Well, we'll take a look. It looked like he got it there. Place the spatula right underneath, but will the replay confirm it? Oh, yeah. That's good. What a save. Yeah, I don't think this needs to be reviewed a lot by Wayne Lee. Pretty much every angle we've seen so far has been showing that Louis Sakonoko got his hand under there. Yeah, that was some uh, original House of Pancake stuff right there. <laughs> it really was. Louis Sakonoko. Oh, now they're going French. Now they're going to talk. You see yeah. Heno and Louis. There they go. They're yeah. talking some French. Their first language. After review, both 
How about the decision to put Sakonoko in? Alakai Ita's been playing good volleyball. His numbers are strong, but Charlie Wade deciding on a whim here. Go with the gut move, putting Louie in there, and it has paid some dividends here, c -Man. I I totally agree with you, Kano. Halakai Todd, 10 kills. He's leading the way, more kills than any of the rainbow, but he's hitting 214. That, that might be what's bothering uh, Charlie, is that uh, he had 28 swings more than anybody, but he's only hitting 214. So putting Sakonoka in really a roll of the dice. Good gut move by Charlie, especially in, in this set, giving him some life. Maybe knowing. Got the uh, fellow Frenchman on the other side. Louis would maybe be a little more locked in, perhaps. I totally agree. Further motivated. What an incredible layout save that was to keep the point alive. Hawaii by three. Neusterer with the toss. And it goes out. Great job of Cole Power getting out of the way of that one. Smart move. Dodged it like the Matrix. <laughs> On the tour serve has caused some issues on the Hawaii side. Hawaii right, passing with four, four passers now. That's how much they respect this serve. And it goes out. And it's a Aloha ball in the third. Through the turnstile tonight, 6,923. And they stand here for the set point here in the third frame. Rosenthal sends it out. They'll remain standing. It remains Aloha Ball. And Grigorev is serving. It has been a gutsy performance by UC Irvine. Down a pair of their go-to hitters. They have given Hawaii all they can handle to this point. Pass by Hawkes, pulls Rosenthal off the net. High and away to Louis! Oh my word! He chooses violence! Are you, are you kidding me? Kanoa! Maybe his best swing of the year! Hawaii takes set three, 25-22. They're up 2-1 in the match. Here's the dream. Never stop. Inside the numbers presented by Long's Drugs, the number is 10. Yes, the top 10 highest attended men's volleyball matches this season have all been played right here inside Simplify Arena at Stan Sheriff Center, including tonight 6,923 through the turnstiles. Uh, hey, look, it's Oscar night. This is the <laughs> best show in town. This is a blockbuster <laughs> matchup. Whoa. And most certainly, Hawaii Volleyball all season has been a smash hit. Speaking of smash hits, how <laughs> about Louis Sakonoko? Well, as he brought up tonight, service aces, going over the block, over the block again, pancake dig, get the rally alive, and the game ender. About as emphatic a game ender, as you'll see, and there is some of the discussion, certainly in the French language, between yes. Louis Sakonoko and Elir Heno. <laughs> Look at the Arctic. They're having a, a full-on conversation. And <laughs> Look at Jeremy and Spiros are getting the kick out of it, too. Look at this. I guarantee you, though, it's not trash talk going on. They're very respectful no. of each other. Known each other for 10 years, as you said earlier. Playing at junior national teams together. And a good vibe between these two programs, frankly. Oh, Nathan and Charlie Wade, the, their friendship goes deep, way back. Well, certainly, UC Irvine and Hawaii, always a competitive battle, always impassioned. Uh, you're right on when you say there is distinct respect. Speaking of pancake saves, how about that one by Eleu Choi? Here's Heno, and he got blocked. Stays with it. The swing by Grigorev, saved by Thim. Hawaii on the attack. Here's Hakas, roll shot, rejected by Grigorev. That's set by Rosenthal, a little off the mark, c -Mac. Yeah, I wonder if he's the broken finger that he has. It's all taped up. I wonder if it's starting to affect his, his location, his touch. 
and saying that one got away from him completely. It went instead of going to the two foot line, it went to like the eight foot line. So one serving zero here in set four. Backside is Hakas. Block slowed it down. So Shuey goes middle to Campbell. He's blocked. On the tour out to Heno. A right handed swing by Elir Heno. Okay, now we've seen it all. He's already used up his 99 shots, so he's got 100, <laughs> 100 different shots. Oh my goodness. He's left handed. And he just oh, got it past a Hawaii triple block. <laughs> Hitting with the right. Now he's just toying with all of us. Rosenthal keeps it on the Hawaii side. Sakonoko tried to touch it off the block. Heno, the quick reload. Blocked the cover there by Campbell. Shuey going right back to Heno, but it's tight to the net. Hawaii with an opportunity here. Here's Louie. Blocked back the cover there by Choi. Voss. A little pitter patter above the tape. Louis loads up, goes off the block and into the pin. Point for Hawaii. We have a pretty good vantage point from here, C Mac, and it looked like Sakonoko went off the hands of Carlos and into the antenna. Correct. And I think that's going to be the call, but Nick Mike, he might use his challenge. We'll see. Yep, off. It was off uh, John, uh, Joe Carlos. Pretty savvy maneuver there by Sakonoko, who now has four kills, no errors. One serving two, and Hakas almost caught his freshman teammate in the back of the dome there. So much of Hawaii's success reliant on their effectiveness or lack thereof from the service line. Voss, the behind the head set there, Rosenthal, it's sent back over the net. Rosenthal going outside, here's Thim. And he does a Louis Sakonoko-like maneuver. <laughs> Interesting lineup we see out there here, C-Max. No all tight. No all Todd. Yep. No Chaz Galloway at the moment. You have Thim and Sakonoko out there. And for Irvine, no Darcy and no Flexen. Heno. Oh my goodness. That was a detonation. Good set from Joe Carlos. They seem to both Joe Carlos and Chewy. They know how to set. Kind of, they pretty much get him on the money every time. Back row, Hawkes missed it wide. Oh, we had the floor available. Hawkes with his sixth hitting error. Not having the typical Spiros kind of night. And a good pass here. I think I'd go back to him right away. He's hitting 111. Here's Elir Heno. Already two off of his career high in kills. Roll shot. It's an ace. His first of the evening. His 33rd on the season. Last year he had, what, 87? 87 aces. That was the single season UC Irvine record. In fact, he sits second on the all-time career aces list already at UC Irvine. And he has just been a beast here in this match. One of the things he does well is that he does that, that short serve that he will follow up after his hammer. And uh, he gets aces on it more often than not. Timeout called by the Rainbow Warriors. How would you describe what we have seen here so far tonight? Obviously, Elair Heno has been carrying the load for the Anteaters, but just overall on both sides of the net, how do you start to summarize? Well, I'd say on the both side of the net, I, I call it frustration. On the UC Irvine side of the net, I call it unorthodox. And the unorthodoxy 
of their nature of their lineup and everything else has, has caused Hawaii all kinds of problems in trying to adjust to, uh, you know, the 6'2 setters. He's got Joe Carlos in the front, and then he got Shui in the front, Shui hit in the right all of a sudden. I mean, it's just some weird stuff going on that's making makes it a really, from a spectator standpoint, it's really entertaining. As far as a coach on the sideline goes, it's probably got to be really frustrating having to constantly adjust to all the nuances that are going on on the court. Well, David Niffen likes to schedule tough, and they most certainly have here this season. They come into this match having already played 15 matches against teams currently in the top 20. They're 9-6 and six in those matches. So even on a night where they're short-staffed, so to speak, they have some of those reps under their belt. High ball set to the pin. And we'll see, did it hit the pin off of Thim? I think it did. And it's an out call. It is a point for Irvine and Hawaii reeling here at the onset of this fourth set. We're gonna find a way to slow down Lear Hanno. Here he goes with a quick serve. Rosenthal is going to set up Louis Again, the set a little off the mark. Sakunoko able to overpower the block, but came into the twine. Net violation, and it's a point for Irvine. Some of these sets for Tred Rosenthal just drifting off the mark a bit. You've got to think that his broken finger is starting to affect him a little bit. Eight serving two. Oh, he's scrambling. Thim from off the net. Dug up there by Heno. Carlos going outside, Tongu Tour with the left hand block. Good cover there by Davis Lau. And Hakkas couldn't conjure up the save on the swing by Connor Campbell. And the Anteaters coming out like gangbusters here in set four. They get another bench warning. <laughs> They're an enthusiastic bunch, that's for sure. Well, for good reason. They're up seven here early on in the fourth. Good pass that time by Eleu. Neuster blocked and Ruth. Connor Campbell jumping up next to Brett Sheward. Turning it back. Seven straight points for the Anteaters. You can see the frustration on Charlie Wade's face right there as Shuey got part of that block. Connor Campbell got the block. Oh, that's an overpass. Tongu Tor. Knows what to do with it. Elir Heno wreaking havoc from the service line right now. I think it use up another I'd use up another timeout. Oh, to slow Wade down, gonna, slow down Heno. Charlie Wade gonna bring Alakai Todd back in. Another way to slow things down a little bit. It's another ace. Irvine rolling. Anteaters feeding. Up by 10. We have not seen this this season. I did not see this coming at all. I thought after the Rainbow Warriors won that third set that they'd roll here in the fourth, not to be. Rosenthal going outside, Thim off the launch pad. And it's Keone Thim retreating back to serve. He was able to change the complexion in that third frame from the service line. Well, actually, he realizes it's uh, not his turn. Malika Itad to serve. <laughs> well, he could use a run here, though. We've seen Malika Author some of those. Tongu Tour dug up over the net. Nicely done there by Todd. Middle set, Campbell blocking Ruth. Neuster again. That's his sixth block of the night. Kurt Neuster putting together a pretty complete game tonight. Got two aces. That's six blocks. Five kills, no errors. Well, there's an overpass. New store, make it six kills. Oh, 
And David Niffen doesn't want Hawaii to gain any more oxygen here. Irvine was up 10. Hawaii has scored a few in a row. Timeout on the floor. Welcome back. UC Irvine. Taking a demonstrative advantage here early in set four, trying to even this matchup and force a fifth set for the Outrigger Invitational Championship. Malika Itad, though, helping Hawaii score three straight. Out of the timeout, Carlos going backside to Shuey, and he sends it out. No touch, but an odd decision, perhaps, by Joe Carlos going to his fellow setter, Brett Sheward. I think it was a logical one because they got, they're got they up by seven. If ever they're gonna set Shuey, that's the time to set him when they're up by seven. But I think that, that uh, might be the last set. Shuey, we'll see for a while. Four straight points for Hawaii. Carlos now going outside, Tongu Tur, dug up by Hakas. Eliu Choi gonna set up Thim from off the net. And he sends it out, no touch. And we're gonna have a challenge here by Charlie Wade. He's gonna say there was a touch. This is all is the way attack out, no touch. Warriors are challenging touch by In real time? What do you think you saw, C Mac? In real time, I didn't see a touch. But uh, we'll see what shows up here. Six hands to maybe touch. Hmm. Oh, that's really tough to tell. May have gotten, may have gotten a fingernail there on that left hand of Connor Campbell. Yeah. Your guess is as good as mine. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough one. One more time. Oh, Harry made a decision. Wayne, Wayne Lee already made a decision. After review. And he saw the touch. So a successful challenge by Charlie Wade and Hawaii. A little bit of the momentum moving to their side of the net. They've scored now five in a row. Joe Carlos, high ball set to Tonga Tour. Roll shot, diving save, Choi, that was pretty. Bump set, Todd from the back row. The block slowed it down. Carlos, D set to Hanno. Oh my. Goodness, how about that angle? Oh man, he had the block well formed on him and he found such great vision. Look at Choi's dig here first to keep the rally alive. But Hanno at the end just finds a way to cut that back, wrist away, sharp angle. That is lethal. Yeah, he just knows where the defense is lining up on too, the back row. He knows where all of them are. 28 kills. One off of his career high at 29 earlier this season against USC. Middle set to Neuster, he's blocked, rattled around. Todd gets a swing out of it, he's blocked. Grigorev and Tangu Tur turning it back. <laughs> David Niffen telling us, and they look, if we are on in our serving and passing game, we can play with anybody. They have been proving that this evening. That serve goes long, however. But they have been a team that has been very stingy and feisty from a defensive standpoint, keeping a lot of sequences alive just on sheer determination and hustle. I've been impressed with their passing. They, they're, they've been aced. Six times, it seems like they've avoided about six other aces with, with good passes. What a serve by Thim. And it winds up out of play. Oh, that is a tough 
decision that Eleo Choi had to make. He's looking up at the ball. He's trying to determine where his feet are in relation to the sideline, and he let it by, and it was an ace. <laughs> He's feeling pretty good about it, too, although it was a little bit... If I'm, if I'm his coach, I'm saying, you got to play the close ones, dude. You can't, be, you can't have micros microscopic, you know, distance between the line and the ball. Come on. And he definitely let out a sigh of relief yeah. after uh, that one did drift out of play. Nine serving 14. That was 73 miles an hour, but it goes long. And UC Irvine gets the 15 first in set four. They were up 10. Hawaii showing some fight. We got a long way to go here. It was all calm. And then. Welcome back. Hawaii up two sets to one here on UC Irvine. This three versus five matchup. This championship match effectively for the Outrigger Invitational title. But it's Irvine up 15-9 here in the fourth. Brett Stewart, the familiar face in his return to the islands with the serve. Haka's trying to touch it off the block. Saved by Shuey. Here's Tongu Tur, hop, skipping and jumping on the approach. Quick reload goes off the hands. Punched out of the net area by Carlos. Tongu Tur dug up by Choi over the net and out of play. Akil Tongu Tur is taking some very confident hacks here at this juncture of the match. Yeah, he's, a, he's a gamer, I'm telling you. He's really good, great all-around player. But, uh, you know, the, the fact that he's hitting the ball as hard as he is right now, good sign for Irvine the rest of the year. And that set a little off the net there for Hakas. Gregoriev trying to go with the left hand, and it works. Everything seems to be working right now for UC Irvine. Boy, hitting negative 050 this set. They lead the country in kill percentage. Yeah, they entered this match hitting 413 on the season. Outside, it's Hakas blasted off the hands, but Irvine keeps it alive. Carlos D set to Hanno through the block, saved by Todd. Outside, Hakas. It's pinballed around on the Irvine side, and they are scrambling right now. Back row, Thim. And it's going to be a lift call. They're going to say an illegal contact there by Keone Fim. Irvine has Hawaii doubled up here in the fourth. Second timeout, right in order. And Charlie Wade going to signal for another timeout. He is desperately seeking answers. And right now, it has been a tough code to crack. You see Irvine just seemingly doing everything right. Just when Hawaii had cut the lead down, cut it in half basically after being down 10, cut it to five, and all of a sudden, Irvine makes another run, this time all the way to 18, doubling up. This will be hard for Hawaii to come back on this one. This is a long, long way to go here. Well, let's check in with Ryan Kalei Suji. What's up, Ryan? Hey, thanks, Kanoa. Well, a lot happening on the UC Irvine sidelines with a lot of coaching going on. Of course, again, as they manage this new offense and this new lineup, one of the play uh, coaches that is contributing, of course, is new assistant coach Michael Brinkley, who's taking time to talk to, especially the liberals. With Hawaii, uh, the Anteaters were doing sort of a dual libero system in that last set, going back and forth between a defense and a passing libero. But right now, have kind of stabilized with Cole Powell in that position, but Brinkley taking time to really talk to the passer, especially the defensive court. Brinkley, of course, one of the all-time great liberos out of Irvine, returning to his alma mater to help coach this season. Back over to you guys. He was really good. Yeah, Michael Brinkley was a phenomenal libero for UC Irvine and went on to later have a little, I think, of a mini stint with the national team. He was that good, but then I think got beat out by a guy named Eric Shoji. And now has gone into coaching, obviously. And David Niffen loves the fact that Michael Brinkley's on his staff, I'll tell you that. Well, Niff has to be loving where his 
team is positioned right now just seven points away from forcing a fifth set. It would be the third straight five-setter that Irvine will have played here in this tournament if they can do so. Setting sub for Hoy. We have Kevin Calling now out there for the Rainbow Warriors. Outside, it's Hawkes off the block and out. And so, Tred Rosenthal, the phenom freshman who has played so well all season, that's undeniable. But seemingly just a little off his game here, certainly with regard to location tonight. I think part of it's got to do with his, his, his broken finger. It's got to have some effect on his, his touch, I would think. 10 serving 18. Tonga Tour going to two-hand it over. Free chance here for Hawaii. Calling goes to Todd. And he ignites that one. Well, pretty good luxury there, Charlie Wade. If he does feel like a change is necessary at the setter position, let's go to a guy who was an AVCA All-American three times over at his previous stop at Lewis. Amazing. Probably the best backup setter in the country. <laughs> With all due respect to all the others, I'm not sure I had sure, all sure. of the others, but... Well, he would definitely be up there on the list. Yeah. 11 serving 18. <laughs> Shuey going middle, Grigorev tears into it. Undersized middle, a little like Carl Hoagland from last year from Hawaii's team. 6'4", but he can jump. He's got a quick arm. Knows how quickly he gets up. He gets up before the block is there. Well, he can do a little bit of everything. In fact, he played some opposite during the stretch that Will Darcy missed to start the season. Here's Hawkins all vaulting above the tank. 11 kills now for Spiros Hawkins. Great set from Kevin Calling as well. Well, all these lineup changes has got to be awkward for University of Hawaii as well, having to dig deep into the bench. Shuey going to Grigorev again, obliterating that one. Some of the players on the floor aren't sure if that point was officially logged for a moment there. 20 serving 12. Calling, going to Hakas. He knows where his bread is buttered. And it's Spiros Hakas with 12 kills now to lead the Rainbow Warriors. Four hands up, Spiros finds a way to get around. Outside, here's Heno. There by Choi as he falls to the floor. From the back row, Hawkes makes it work again. Hawaii showing signs of life. A challenge. Choi with a great dig to keep the rally alive, but at the end of this rally, David Niffen's going to say that, that uh, Spinoza Hawkes was over the line, but I don't think it was as even close. So challenging a net violation somewhere. Oh, a net violation. Along the line there in that sequence. Busy night for Wayne Lee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Getting very well acquainted with the DV Replay 2.0. <laughs> yeah. See a touch here somewhere. A little touch there. Maybe the torso or the jersey of one of the Hawaii players coming down, because you did see the net shake a little bit. Yeah, and, and that time, Connor Campbell was quick to point it out. He's the closest guy there. Yeah. He's better than a replay. He actually was like three feet away and saw it. That's why Niffin is using up his challenge on this. He trusts Connor Campbell's judgment, obviously. Wow. 
So here we go. We're playing this full point. So the serve hits the net. So that's part of the reason why the net is shaking. Ah. But let's see here. So the way it goes up for that block, was there a little more contact there at the end? Hard to tell. After review, the call stands. And the call will stand. So Niffin loses the challenge. Stoodles Hoppus getting a little impatient behind the service line. He's gesturing that David Niffin needs to stop this conversation so they can continue play. Nixon Chun, the top guy, really is the one who should tell Wayne Lee, cut the conversation, play ball. So no challenges left for David Niffin. Unless we go to a fifth, they get an extra one. Hawaii still with two in its pocket. That one pops straight up in the air. Shuey going middle to Campbell. Diving save, calling. It's Choi going to Todd. High hands, Shuey punches it in the air. Tango Turo with a layout save. Power will send it over the net. Advantage Hawaii, can they catch it in? Calling to Thim, he couldn't get it down. Carlos chasing down the set. Tajano hits the pin. Hawaii gets the point. They're within a handful here in the fourth. You know, Hanno got a little frustrated. The set was a little wide. Even he couldn't manufacture a kill out of that one. And now Ant Eaters signaling for a timeout. We'll keep things here. It looked like Hawaii was down in the dumps here in this fourth set. They were down by 10 points. It was 12 to 2. But they haven't decided to cash in yet their chips and just take it to a fifth. Uh, they are still fighting here. They really are. You know, it's giving, it's giving uh, you know, Kevin Calling some quality time with this particular lineup, which I think is a good thing. If you look at the, you know, the big picture of the whole season, for him to get more time, I think, is valuable. Uh, but for them to now cut the lead in half again, you know, can they sustain this one? We'll see. All right, let's uh, send it back over to Ryan. We're talking about Kevin calling head coach Charlie Way, taking time to talk to the setter. Uh, of course, just the insert and trying to update him on what the game plan is for stopping UC Irvine. But one of the players that is cheering extremely loud, I will say, for Kevin calling is Shred Rosenthal, jumping off the bench, exhorting the senior, giving him praise for the way that he's been setting these last few moments. The relationship between the senior and the freshman is one that is described as a very older brother-like situation. Tred Rosenthal said he looks up to Kevin Calling and is thankful to have this senior leadership really playing out here in this fourth set. Back over to you guys. Thanks a lot, Ryan. Obviously, C-Mac, uh, both of these guys have proven that they can play the position. How do they differ, though, when one is out there versus the other? Uh, you know, that's a good point. I would say that Calling is a pretty conservative setter, and he sets a very hittable ball every time. Tread has been struggling because of his hand. The sets are kind of going too tight and they're too off the net. So I think the difference is that the hitters know now that they're going to be, be set the ball in the right place all the time. 15 serving 20 out of the timeout. Hakas, it's a good serve. Great pass by Tony Luter outside Heno, and he two hands it through the block as he so often does. <laughs> Another one of his unorthodox shots. That's his 29th kill. That matches his career high. <laughs> Calling, going backside to Todd. Rips it through the hands. Good effort there by Carlos. But Todd gets the kill. That's his 12th put down. The two setters. Meeting up there as Shuey helps Carlos back to his feet. Joe Carlos, an interesting story. Spent two seasons at Pepperdine before heading to UC Irvine. And the guy who was the incumbent setter and had a conversation with David Niffin about the idea of Brett Stewart joining the program as Hino gets kill number 30. But uh, David Niffin, to his credit, he said, hey, look, I wanted to make sure that Joe Carlos was on board with it. And after giving him a night to think about it, Joe Carlos said, hey, look, we need to get him. That's what would be best for the team. What a great team player. You know, you got you to gotta love it. Every coach wants to have like six Joe, Joe Carlos's yeah. on their team. Hawkus 
Gonna set Todd. Three blockers waiting for him. Rattled around. Free ball coming over the net. Calling with the first touch. So the set goes outside the FIM. Off the hands. Hanno the save. Carlos going to Elir on the D set. And he can just, from anywhere on the floor, hit just about any angle imaginable. And he passed that ball from back middle and called for a set on the back right. <laughs> he just seems to be getting stronger. He's not like getting weaker as the night goes on. He's getting stronger. I mean, he's drifting to his right yep. and still going wrist away with tempo, yep. with pace. Outside, here's Thim. The windup uncoils and uncorks it long. And it's Aloha ball for Irvine here in the fourth. A fifth set seems imminent. Hino to force a fifth. Oh, Hawaii out of system, bump set, Thim, two blockers up, they slow it down. Irvine touching everything on the block. Campbell, tries to go wrist away, missed it wide, point for Hawaii. So it's not Pau yet here in the fourth, but an extremely tall hill to climb here. As Alakai Todd will retreat back to serve. Todd loops it over. Carlos going to Heno. The tip drops. Elir Heno. He has been superhuman. 32 kills, hitting well over 400. And we are playing a fifth set for the Outrigger title. We'll be back. Well, fans getting their money's worth here as we are surpassing, or at least creeping, across the three-hour mark here in this Outrigger Invitational Championship match. Some of the cell phone lights illuminating here as they play Journey over the loudspeaker. Don't stop believing. You see, Irvine has certainly lived up to that mantra, and Hawaii going to try to turn things around here in the fifth. It is the second time this season Hawaii is playing a five-setter. Their first five-setter was the second match of the year. They lost to Loyola Chicago in five. Hawaii has not lost a match since. They've won 15 in a row. For UC Irvine, much more experience in five-setters. They've played five of them. They are two and three in five set matches. You know, I think that uh, the real question here, Char uh, Canola, is that Charlie's got some tough decisions to make here as far as his lineup goes. Does he go back to Galloway, his original left sider in the first set? Does he go back to Tred Rosenthal, his original setter, or does he stick with Colin? Does he go with Sakanoko instead of instead of uh, Alakai Todd. He's got a lot of decisions to make. And uh, clearly, clearly the, uh, the advantage is to, as far as momentum is concerned, is in UC Irvine's corner right now. They've got the Rainbow Warriors befuddled in their unorthodox style of play. And a guy named Halir. Yeah, who's got 32 kills, a career high. Ryan may have more info. What's up, Ryan? Hey, thanks. Well, during that break, head coach Charlie Wade taking a lot of time to talk to Tread Rosenthal, who is starting in this fifth set. He said, hey, just air it out. Calm it down. And he looked over at Spirosakis, and he said, this guy, this is the guy that we want to set. So look for Tread Rosenthal to hopefully settle down, and a lot of balls will be going to Spirosakis here in this fifth set. Back over to you guys. So here we go. The Outrigger Invitational never disappoints, uh, with the exception of Hawaii's first two matches in the tourney where they swept Lewis and swept number one GCU. Every match in this Invitational has gone five sets. Best preseason tournament in the country. It is akin to a Final Four or a Big West Conference tournament type of setting. Some elite level volleyball. Alaka Itad on the floor. Keone Thim back to serve. One set for the Outrigger title. 
Pass by Power is a beauty. Middle set, Gregoria dug up by Fim. Rosenthal sets outside to Hawkes and he gets it home. Boy, Spiros was in a little early, had to back up and do a standing jump there. <laughs> Shaking his head like, what is going on? He's got 14 kills, he's hitting 222, go along with seven digs and three blocks. One serving zero. Fim, wow. How about that pass by Power? Outside, and Lear gets blocked. Oh, a little scramble play and miscommunication between Power and Shuey. Drops to the floor, Hawaii gets the point. How about, how about Fim just serving up a bullet and Power just pops it right up. Twice. Cole Power is something fierce. Yeah, he's really good, really good player. Two serving zero here in the fifth. Keone Fim, he has University of Hawaii Volleyball in his veins. And he unleashed the beast on that serve. Even Cole Power couldn't catch up with that one. Three serving zero. Gets it in again. Henno's gonna get the set on the outside. Dug up by Troy. Troy trying to keep it alive after that second touch by Hawkes. And it's a point for Irvine, another kill for Elir Heno, he has 33. Eleu Troy, by the way, with 10 digs, you know who else has 10 digs? Keone Thim, to go along with his five service aces. Oh, amazing. That one scraped the tape. Outside, it's Hawkes, off the block, and down! Great pass by Keone Thim, Ken Rosenthal put up a nice hittable ball for Spiros Hawkes and Hawkes did the rest. Why he did only .081 in the fourth set. One of the reasons why they lost. You see Irvine hitting 300. Kurt Neustor, four serving one. Schuer going high and away to Hanno, blocked. Got his own cover from behind the line. Hanno off the block. A standing Vert jump swing that didn't look like he put much on it at all still results in a kill. He just got the magical hand tonight. He rarely do anything wrong. He's only got a couple of errors. Oh, but an out serve by Joe Carlos. And a free point in the fifth for Hawaii. You cannot give up three points in a set five. Now, Tred Rosenthal replaced in that fourth set, but brought back out here for the fifth. Gets the serve in. Carlos going quick middle to Campbell. It was a bit of a side swipe swing, but still got it down. And now, Elir Heno will serve for Irvine. This is one guy where if he got an H right away, I'd call timeout immediately to slow him down, his, his momentum, his rhythm. Yoni Finn with the bump set. Oh, Todd has to two-hand it over. Free chance here for Irvine. A little bit of an overpass there by Lau, though. Dug up over the net. Oh, great job by Hawkins to try to keep it alive there. Well, they're going to say that it was out of play, and so a uh, point for Irvine. And Chaz Galloway going to re-enter the match here, replacing Keone Finn, who hears it from the fans. So Charlie Wade going back with the original starting rotation. Four serving five in the fifth. Pass by Choi, Rosenthal. 
Going to set up Hawkins. Three blockers against him, and he still gets the kill. It was Joe Carlos trying to dig. It may have been an out ball. Yeah, I thought it was an out ball, but Joe Carlos might have thought it touched the block maybe or something, so that's why he played it. What a battle this has been. Irvine showing so much grit. Hawaii on a night where they haven't had their A game, still trying to somehow rip away a victory. Heno blocked. Oh, what a save there on the cover by Power. Tonga Tor winds up, goes through the triple block and down. Well, you see Irvine's really battle. Well, let's take a look at Power's save first. That keeps the rally alive. And Tonga Tor finishes it, but. They've really been effective at just going up and like tooling the block and just working it. Block, even though Hawaii's block has been fairly effective tonight, they have more blocks than UC Irvine, but they have a lot of blocks that have slipped through. We have 13 blocks for Hawaii compared to nine for the Anteaters. Dom to serve into the net. And Hawaii up two. Remember, these two teams met up in the Big West Tournament Championship match last year. Hawaii won 3-1. Hawaii had a season-best 17 blocks in that match. And while they put up some good blocking numbers tonight, overall, you're right, C-Mac. Irvine's been able to still squeak past it a number of occasions. How about the set to Shuey with in-system and Brett Schuer with a little extra pepper on it. Oh, it was pretty gutsy by Joe Carlos there. But he knew that Joe, that uh, Schuer would have only one blocker up because all the tension is being paid to the middle. Uh, that one just rolled over the tape. That set goes over the net. But Todd able to catch it before it went across. At least that's the initial call. And I think David Niffen, who gets an extra challenge here because of the fifth set, is considering doing so. Uh, but maybe he won't. The team's now swapping sides. It looked like for a second there, Niffen was reaching for the challenge paddle. Again, each team getting an extra challenge here in set five, but instead, they're swapping ends. It's 8-6 Hawaii. Once again, that set a little tight to where it had to be jumped over. It was a 50-50 right ball around the net. Tred's got to keep those balls a little bit further off the net, give the hitters some space to swing. Yeah, Todd just able to, in the eyes of the officials, get it before it crossed over. And now Andin Kiriaku comes into the match replacing Joe Carlos, so a more traditional pin hitter now on the floor here for Irvine. And Brett Sheward remains as the setter. It is eight serving six. Alaka Itad to serve. A marathon match here to finish out the outrigger. Hano, that pass goes over the net. And out. It's an ace for Alakai. That was a huge, huge point for Hawaii. Make the turn 8-6 and then get the first point after 8-6. Big time play from Malakai. Nine serving six. Malakai taking a little something off that time. Grigorev blocked out. Terminal Stewart with a little extra through the net. Timeout Irvine. Neusterer with his eighth block of the match. Hawaii by four. Welcome back, Kurt Neuster. What a match he's had. Six kills, hitting 500. Just got his eighth block to put Hawaii up four here in set five. Todd out of the timeout. Shuey going quick middle. Grigorev is blocked. And it's going to be a roof. It's Neuster again, jumping up next to Rosenthal. Who would have thought Neusser is blocking would turn this fifth set around? Kurt Neusser and Rosenthal impenetrable as Hawaii has scored four in a row. They're up a handful here in set five. 
And a hot serve that time by Todd. And a hot swing by Kiriakou. My goodness, making his first appearance of the season. And quite the introduction right there. From Ajax Northwest, Ontario, Canada. A little glimpse at the future of UC Irvine Volleyball, perhaps, as he heads back to the bench. That was a great swing by, by him. Tonga Tur to serve. Pass by Choi. Rosenthal has to chase it down. It's top three blockers waiting, and he sends it out. Was there a touch? No touch. Eight serving 11 in the fifth. And Charlie Wade going to signal for a timeout. Well, it's Oscar night, and you couldn't have asked for a better screenplay <laughs> here for a final match. And the Outrigger Invitational go in five, a thriller between two Big West powers. Perhaps a number one ranking hanging in the balance if Hawaii is able to pull this one out. Yep. Good time out by Charlie Wade, I think. It's important to get, um, get Korea um, Max off the line. The serving line, he's been so effective from back there. He takes that big run up and he rips away. He's a Gregoria, he's just such a talented player. Coming out of the timeout, this will be huge to see if, how much he puts on. Oh no, we have Tonga Tour. Is Tonga Tour serving right now? Tonga Tour is serving. He yeah. takes an equal run up. The both those guys take a massive run up and uh, they get a lot of a lot of pace in the ball and they can locate it a little bit better. It's like a hybrid serve. They can locate it a little bit better and serve it away from Hawaii's good passers. Hawaii hitting 600 here in the fifth compared to 308 so far for Irvine. Let's send it over to Ryan. Hey, thanks, Kanoa. Well, on the Hawaii sideline, Charlie Wade taking time to talk to Chaz Galloway. A lot of pressure being put on Chaz Galloway being reinserted back into the match after having sat out for the majority of the match. Really trying to get him up to speed with passing, trying to make sure that he is comfortable with the passing. Another thing that happened during the last time, we're seeing a lot of leadership uh, direction by Spiros Hakas, really talking, talking to his teammates, uh, trying to encourage him, trying to get them to calm down, really showing his senior leadership. Back to you guys. Thanks a lot, Ryan. Hawaii by three. Akil Tongutur's serve has caused some trouble on the Hawaii side. That one scrapes the tape. Rosenthal going back row. Hawkins! See you, Livers! Didn't you say that he got a... Did Roosevelt get instructions from Charlie to serve, to set this guy a lot? Pretty smart coaching, Charlie. Keep setting Hawkins. And now Keone Finn brought back in to serve here for Hawaii. 12 serving eight. And it's a good one. A freebie. That was way out. Give Gregorev credit for just trying to force Hawaii into a decision there. He's got so much adrenaline pumping though. I'm not sure. He's, he was just going to take any ball wherever it is in the court. Now Gregorev with the serve into the string and Hawaii back up four. And it's Kurt Neustor. It's been a Neustor kind of night here in Manoa. Pass by Tom Latour, tight to the net, middle set, Campbell punched up by Hawkes. The set by Todd to Hawkes. Oh, and it's dug up there by Shuey. Outside, Heno's gonna punch it deep. Diving save, Thim. Diving save, Neustor. And we play on in the sequence. Outside, Heno. Two hands down the line and in. Helir Heno, relentless. He's got such amazing vision, but how about the scrappiness by Hawaii's defense to keep that rally alive? One dive there from Finn, another dive there from Neustra. Hawaii still by three, and Trent Rosenthal catching him off guard. The freshman set.
setter with a big time ad lib. First time he's been offensive tonight. That should give him some confidence going back to the serving line. And just under 7,000 rise. Aloha ball for the match. And for the outrigger invitational title. Carlos going backside, Heno. Oh, he is a mutant. 36 <laughs> kills for this guy. Amazing. Now he goes back to serve, and he's maybe a better server than he is an attacker. Perhaps, right, better be careful here. Perhaps the most unique player in all of college volleyball, Elir Heno. 11 serving 14, it's still a little ball. Down the line, the pass by Hawkes. Rosenthal back to Spiros, blocked and roofed. And Spiros goes down, and he's clutching at his left knee. Oh, and that is about the last thing that Hawaii fans want to see is Spiros Hakas down in pain. It is absolutely silent here in the arena. You can hear a pin drop. And Spiros being helped up. Unable to put weight on that left leg. He was clutching at the knee. We are going to show the replay. We warn you, this could be difficult to watch. Oh, yeah. Oh, ouch. And Spiros Hakas, who has helped to raise the level of this program in his time here, at any given moment, has been consistently the best player on the floor. And concern now for his health as he is going to be looked at, and that is going to be a major storyline following this match. But Hawaii is still trying to accomplish the objective here in this match. It is still Aloha Ball. And watch for a serve, probably go to the, the substitute. And it's an ace by Heno. Louis Sakonoko in there in place of Hakas. And he couldn't handle his fellow countrymen's delivery that time. Timeout is taken, and we're gonna keep things here. Oh, the air has been sucked out of this building, even with Hawaii on the precipice of a win tonight, even with Hawaii possibly on the verge of claiming an Outrigger Invitational Championship, that scene that saw Spiros Hakas writhing in pain after falling down awkwardly on that left knee, that's going to stick with people here tonight. Oh, for sure. So how about the, the emotional leadership in Spiros? He wanted to win this tournament badly. Saw so how he played the first two nights. Almost flawless volleyball. And he wanted to win this one tonight. He's, he was the one who was, as you, you noted earlier, was uh, sometimes running the huddle, telling the players, here's what we need to do to, to take this one out, to beat this very feisty, UC Irvine team, and now all of a sudden, he's not even on the floor. I believe they took him out into the, the locker room somewhere. He's just not, uh, not even around. Let's see who's gonna step up and emotionally recharge the batteries of this team. All right, let's check in with Ryan really quick here. That's why right, Spirits Hawkins right now in the corner in the, in the uh, tunnel there being tended to by Dr. Nichols, a longtime team physician, looking at that knee. And the, also happening, a little prayer happened with some of the Hawaii players praying for their fallen teammate. Back over to you guys. Two-time All-American, among the best players in all of college volleyball. And so we will await any further word, whether it comes within the structure of our broadcast and post game tonight or beyond. But right now, Hawaii trying to finish the deal. It's still Aloha Ball, Heno to serve. Pass by Thim, Rosenthal to Voss, the set was low, pinballed around, Tonga Torr's gonna get a swing out of it. Off the high hand, saved by Thim. Advantage, Hawaii, Voss gets it down, and Hawaii wins! The Rainbow Warrior 
Spurs claim the Outrigger Invitational title. And they do so by way of a knockdown, drag out marathon classic against UC Irvine. One of the better matches we'll probably see all year for its uniqueness, Kanoa. Uniqueness in the lineups and uniqueness in the battles. The, the, the backstories, the injuries, the incredible performance by Hillary Hanna. Go on and on. Amazing night. Immediately after that last point, after that kill went down by Voss, Tred Rosenthal went sprinting into the tunnel and he wanted to check on his fallen teammate Spiros Hakas. And again, we will await any further word on his condition. It may not come for a few days. Hawaii has a couple of big matches coming up this week against Long Beach State. And the larger picture here this season could most certainly be impacted by what we saw with regard to Spiros Hakas towards the end of that match tonight. But the victory remains. Hawaii has now won 16 straight, and they take the 28th Outrigger Invitational title, C-Mac. What a night. What a night. Kurt Nurse were having an amazing night, especially at the net blocking. He also was a great serving night as well. Charlie Wade, you should have seen him celebrate after it was all over. He was. He was celebrating as if he just won the national championship. It was that big. It meant that much, I think, to both coaches and both, both, teaming, both teams. So we're being informed that Spiros Hakas was being led out of the arena uh, in a wheelchair. And so that is the uh, only update that we can give you. Most certainly he is going to be taken to be uh, monitored and looked at more closely and diagnosed and I think David Niffen knows what so many of us are thinking uh, that hey look great match uh, prayers to Spiros Hakas yeah absolutely Bank of Hawaii presents the players of the match let's take a look here Elir Heno yeah I'd say that he was deserving of this nod career high 36 kills Hit 4-12, two blocks, six digs, three aces. Uh, one of the most incredible individual performances uh, we will ever see in this building. And how about Keone Thim? What a spark he was off the bench tonight. Five kills, five assists, two blocks, 12 digs, and a handful of service aces and really was able to change the vibe at different times here in the match. Scott Robbs is with Charlie Way. Coach, congratulations, though I think the celebration kind of tempered a bit by what we saw with Spiros. Yeah, I didn't really see it. Um, we'll see. We'll obviously uh, take a look at it, and uh, hopefully he's okay. Talk about this match, though. It was a typical Big West match. It didn't count in the standings, but both teams acted like it did. Well, they all count. It's not like you're doing an exhibition. Uh, well, I'm talking about conference county. standing. Yeah, you're playing for a, a tournament championship, and it's... Uh, it was two really good teams going at it. And, uh, you know, I, I never seen one guy just take over like that. That was impressive. You know, and even there in the fourth set from the service line, uh, yeah, there was no doubt he was good early and often. How much did their 6-2 kind of throw you for a loop? Eh, it was just the timing of it, right? And it was a little, they, they really were forced in the middle early and uh, to some success. You know, then in the middle there, we kind of got the timing down a little bit. But Heno, we never really stopped him. He was really good. He was predictable as it was. Um, so, yeah, thrilled to get the win, and uh, it was a lot of fun. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, guys. Get off. Thanks a lot, Scott. And so, Charlie Wade, reserving any kind of specific comment on Spiros Hawkes, obviously a lot of information uh, remains uh, to be gathered here and so uh, we will most certainly uh, hey look we we do these broadcasts uh, on behalf of spectrum sports and and certainly uh with regard to university of hawaii sports as a whole and so uh, we have no shame in terms of expressing our desire uh, to see uh, spiros hawkus be okay and i think i'm speaking for our entire crew when we say uh, we are most certainly sending the positive vibes and prayers his way uh, he is uh, such an incredible player and such a good dude uh, that I think I'm speaking for everybody when we say that we hope uh, it is not too serious 
And if it is, uh, we hope that a speedy recovery is uh, on the other side. Uh, that said, CMAC, uh, you have Spiros Hakas, who we are told uh, officially has been named the most outstanding player in this tournament. Uh, that will be a bittersweet honor, perhaps, depending on what we learn. Uh, UC Irvine is the tournament runner-up uh, by virtue of the tiebreaker system. Uh, I will give you the last thought here on what was a roller coaster ride of emotions here this evening yeah, in Manoa. Yeah, it really was. It, it was a uh, match. It was just. It was just so weird and different, uh, especially when the uh, UC Irvine had two players uh, that, that didn't play, Flexen and and Darcy, two very very good players. When they come back, UC Irvine is going to be a really tough out. In, in Hawaii, you know, having Fred Rosenthal with his with his uh, finger issues going on, and Charlie Wade moving in, a lot of players in and out of positions, trying to figure out the six-two system that Nippon was running. If nothing else, it was an entertaining night for everybody. I'm not sure how much it helped them get ready for Long Beach State next week, because that's going to be. Two tough matches on the road. Alaka Itad, Guilherme Voss from Hawaii also making the all-tournament team. Ilir Heno and Max Grigoriev from UC Irvine making it on there. Max Rocky from Lewis and Cam Thorne rounding out the all-tournament squad. I want to ask you one more question uh, because you have Long Beach coming up. You have conference play beginning here this coming week for Hawaii. Uh, if, Lord forbid, Spiros Hakas is unavailable for a lengthy stretch of time, who is Charlie Wade going to be relying on to try to fill that incredible void? Oh, man. Talking about leadership-wise or physically? How about everything? Both, yeah. It might take, it might take multiple players to do, to do fill in what Spiros has meant to this team. But I think on the, on the left side, I would think that, that um, it would be Chaz and Keone would be the two, two outsides. But I wouldn't put it past Charlie Wade and just put Sakura up in there as well. Could be yeah. by committee, in other words. Exactly. Which is usually what's required when you're talking about one yes. incredible player. Exactly. Uh, we wish him the best for sure. Don't forget about the post-game show. A lot to talk about and break down here from this evening's festivities. In the end, though, it is Hawaii still streaking, having won 16 in a row. Next up, Big West play and Long Beach State. For now, for CMAC, Chris McLaughlin, and our entire crew, I'm Kanoa Lehi. Aloha from Mano. Highlights of the Our Eager Invitational Championship match, Hawaii and UC Irvine. We start off with the Rainbow Warriors service game, the tops in the country, and it continued to show why here on a Sunday evening. Hawaii with nine aces, five of them by this guy, Keone Thim, who didn't start the opening set, but played the majority of the match. He came away with five kills. We mentioned those five service aces that came in big times and also did a pretty good job in serve receive. Kurt Neusser, not known for his offense. He's in there more for defense. And tonight, he brought his defense in more. Neusser with nine blocks to lead Hawaii in that category. And Spiros Hawkins, 17 kills for the Greek native. Only hit 244, but was called upon quite a bit here on this five set match. There you see Hawkins being taken off the floor at the end of the fifth set. And Ilir Heno, maybe one of the better performances we've seen by an opponent here at the Simplify Arena in many, many years. 36 kills hit 412, but it wasn't enough as Y claims the championship, winning in five. Welcome back to the Hawaii Honda Dealers post-game show. All right, let's take a look at the final numbers from this one. They're brought to you by Steve's Plumbing. A lot of numbers. Hawaii Irvine going five. Hawaii wins it. That's the most important. Neither team hit for a great percentage, though Irvine just a tick under 300 is not too shabby. Hawaii, uh, gosh, about 150-something points below their season average. How about the blocks, though, Hawaii? With 15 blocks on the night. The digs went in favor of Irvine, but the service game, once again, in favor of the University of Hawaii. But it's kind of a tempered feeling here in the arena. Winning the Outrigger, I mean, just three great nights of volleyball by the Swai team, but see Spiros go down towards the end of the fifth set. Now, I stayed at a Holiday Inn Express once, but I'm still not a doctor. But it didn't look good, at least from what I saw. Yeah, it really didn't. It's Did very you guys catch that reference from the commercials? No. No. You, you guys don't want to You gotta remember I'm young. 
Well, no, it's like recent. Oh, I don't watch TV. Oh, never mind. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I know. Just super unfortunate, especially someone that just pours out so much emotion for this team. The biggest leader on the court. They were talking about it during the game. He really brought the team together to really pull off this win. It's just unfortunate to see something fairly tragic happen. One of the last points. So our heart goes out to Spiros. We all hope he's okay. You know, and it was just a very defining moment, I think, for the team because you could see the look on everyone's faces. I think we all knew uh, just how important he is as a player, what he contributes. You look at the stat sheet, and it's pretty obvious how uh, important he is. Uh, but when you saw just the player's reaction after, uh, you also got a sense to a better understand of just what he means to the team as a whole. Not necessarily for the numbers he puts up for the team, but the leader that he is. Uh, they were visibly shaking. Some players almost near tears uh, on the sideline. And uh, But credit Hawaii, they <laughs> got it together. UCI's best server back there, Heno, and they were able to side out and win the match because, uh, you know, a lot of teams could have folded when your leader goes down like that. Yeah, especially that late in the fifth set. One good thing for Hawaii, though, is that throughout the season, Charlie has used his bench quite a bit, so a lot of guys have had a lot of experience. But I guess the question is, you don't replace the Spiros if he's unavailable, but who takes his spot? I would think it's Keone and Chaz goes into that if, hopefully, I mean, if worst comes to worst, yeah, Keone and Chaz are going to take that outside position. Keone's really proven to steady out his passing a little bit more than Luis Akinoko. And again, just the offensiveness that he brings from the service line, if you can have that person in there at least three rotations every single match, he's going to put a lot of teams out of system and make them struggle to side out a lot. And I think it's just going to have to re require a, just more an evolution of the Hawaii offense, not so much focused on just one player, but really Hawaii's going to have to get more production and, and really spread things around in, in order to be able to combat some of these other teams. Let's talk about this match, though. It went five, and UC Irvine almost won it with one guy. I mean, Heno single hand, 36 kills hit over 400. I've watched a lot of volleyball, as you both have, in this arena. I can't remember the last opponent that was able to do something like that. You know, it was really incredible just to watch and just to see how dynamic of a player he is, how much shots he has, because he found kills in so many ways. I mean, how many times did he get kills with just two hands, uh, setting the ball over and tipping it? He really is a all-around player. And the even scarier thing is, this Irvine team is down two of their best players that yeah. are, are not playing right now because of the injury. And so they have two big guns that are coming back. Uh, it, this is a very good Irvine team. They really are. And the big thing that I loved watching this Irvine team was the scrappiness. It was really cool to just kind of see if Brett Short was taking the ball in the back row. Joe was easily um, stepping in, setting the ball, and vice versa. They played super dynamic, and they played incredibly smart. I think Hawaii was very caught off guard, and it took them a minute to adjust. But this Irvine team, like you said, is incredibly well I mean, they train pretty well. It's, they're pretty incredible. Let's talk about Trent Rosenthal, because he had one of his poor performances, I think, of his young career here tonight. And I'm sure the broken finger has affected him quite a bit. Yet, Hawaii was able to find a way to win. And he just gutted things out, particularly in that last set. Well, you know, you really expect this. And I think sometimes we forget that he's 17 years old and that we expect a lot out of him. And so, uh, one of the other things is just the mental toughness. As a setter, sometimes it, it does get frustrating on your own, right? When your sets aren't going where they normally are and your connections are good, you tend to overthink things. Things get to be a little more complicated. Uh, and so I think it was a good move by Charlie to pull him out, to give him time to just sort of relax and come back in that fit set. You know, another move I thought that paid dividends for Hawaii was in that third set, kind of the do or die set, right? Tied at a, a set of piece, and then they brought in Luis Sakanoko, and that seemed to re-energize the Hawaii team. That was a pivotal set to win. It really was, and Luis just has this energy and aura about himself that he does not only spark the team, but he sparks the crowd. We saw the crowd get really loud after it. He knows Halir very well. They've played together for 10 plus years. And I think he helped with a little bit of the scouting while he was in the game. And he was just kind of that spark that Hawaii needed. Brought the energy, some big swings, which they were struggling a couple times. But he just played lights out, especially that swing to end that one set. Yeah, and again, Hawaii's middles had a fantastic night. I mean, they relied a lot on Gary Voss as well as Kurt Nusser, who really helped to lead the defense on the Hawaii block. Uh, and, and credit to, you know, Gary for being up and active and being available in transition, getting that game-winning point.
You know, you mentioned blocks. The way he had 17 blocks is ridiculous. Look at G Voss. How much? How many of those blocks would you say are the result of, of the serve first? A lot of it was, but I think what was really good for Hawaii tonight, and they knew they had to do, was be very structured up there on the net and press. They did an incredible job because when you have players like Kalir tipping a lot of the balls, pushing it over into the block into, if you're not well pressed over the net, you're going to get tooled a lot. And I think the scouting report really executed that too. Yeah, as we take a look at some of these blocking schemes, one of the other things is when they are limited attackers, it's a little easier to read. I mean, Irvine, no doubt, was uh, keeping Hawaii guessing early on in the match, but I think once Hawaii blockers got a sense of what they do, obviously there were maybe three hitters on the court for Irvine, so it becomes a little more condensed. And you see the blocking numbers continue to rise as the quality of opponent continues to rise, which you would think would be the other way around, but. Charlie even told us at the beginning of the year it would work that way because when you play those non-traditional teams, they're tipping and they're dunking and they're hitting balls in the nets. You're playing a team that's as good as you. You're going to get more opportunities to actually go and block a ball. And a lot of it is just how physical this Hawaii team is. With those lesser teams, they're a little bit smaller on the roster. They're undersized. They won't hit the ball as high as a lot of teams like Irvine has, Lewis, and Grand Canyon. The ball's just played at a much higher rate height on the antenna mm -hmm. um so a lot of times when you play those lesser teams they tend to swing a little bit lower and you get caught i guess in between your armpits for <laughs> hawaii so yeah um a lot of it's due to that so hawaii claims the outrigger invitational they go three and zero. Oh. they cap it off with a five set victory over uc irvine we'll take a break kurt newster joins us in the corner when we return From Spectrum Sports, it's the Hawaii Honda Dealers post-game show. Well, Hawaii wins it in five over UC Irvine. And there you see Kurt Neusser going up and putting the ball straight back down on the other side as he and his teammates win the Outrigger Invitation. Kurt joins us now in the corner. Six kills, two service aces, and nine blocks. Talk a bit about tonight's match and talk a bit about your performance as well if you can. You know, tonight's match was a whole lot of fun. It was a real battle. Uh, you know, they're so scrappy. It's a very scrappy team. You know, Shuey, Brett Sheward, yep. who, who was our libero last year, he's over there setting now. So having two liberos on the court at all time and another setter that's really scrappy is very, very hard to put a ball down. So we knew going into the match that we had to be patient. And, you know, thankfully we were fresh. Those guys had played you know, three games to five sets. So uh, thankfully we did a good job on Friday and Thursday. So today we were a little bit more fired up and ready to go. Did, so. you, guys, did you guys get a little bit uh, impatient maybe at times, you think? For sure. Frustrated? Uh, yeah, 100%. You know, they were just so scrappy and they always got the ball back over the net. So that's a, a new thing for us. Talk about your service game. I mean, because I feel like, you know, that, that has been a skill that you have really perfected and it seems to be getting stronger and stronger each match. Uh, how have you developed that skill over time? Uh, that's all Milan Sarkovic. <laughs> you know, he, uh, he's the master for helping me, me do that. I think last year, part of the reason I modulated so much last year is because I served in front of Jakob. And, you know, he's the best server in the country, one of the best in the world. I wanted to give him full authority to green light it. You know, this year, I've got a little bit more flexibility. Um, and, you know, I'm just trying to give my boys a chance to score. They do all the hard work. They play They play defense. They block. I just put the ball in play. I don't know. We saw you with that, <laughs> with that like, gnarly save, that one-handed dive. You're playing some defense, too. <laughs> Super athletic. Um, so speaking of your service, we interviewed Charlie about four weeks ago. He said your serving was definitely the highlight of your game. Yeah. But... The biggest thing that stood out to me this weekend was your block, especially against two top five ranked opponents. Is that something you've just really been working on? Was it the scouting report? Talk to us a little bit about the blocking mentality you had this weekend, because we saw a little bit more of a spark of you on the net, I feel like. Yeah, I think a lot of it is, you know, that's one of my strengths. You know, we've got such talented pin hitters this year. Spiros, Chaz, and Alakai, they're all... You know, Alice is one of the best in the country in hitting percentage. Spiros is one of the best in the country in hitting percentage. You know, my job to contribute is to touch every ball in the block. You know, I don't need to get set. There's way better hitters out there than me. I'm just trying to do my best to slow down the other guys. Well, you're jumping all around, uh, as you always do. It looked like at one point that you dove, you hurt your hip. We're going to take a look at the play again, not to make you re relive it or anything, but did you come up a little gimpy after this, uh, this play right here? 
Uh, I was just concerned about where the ball was going, you know. I saw Keone on the ground, jumped over him. Um, that was fun. I, I wish we got that point, though. <laughs> did you did you get a bruise or a burn or yeah, anything? Yeah, so uh, a couple days ago, Saturday, I chased down a ball. Or Friday, I chased down a ball and just landed right on the same spot. But it's it's all good. It's it's part of the fun, part of the memories. Yeah, core point is fun. Uh, obviously, just towards the ending of that, your, your thoughts about, you know, Spiris and where he's at and, and just what he means to this team overall. Um, of course, we know what he provides statistically, but, but talk about his role uh, and, and just that moment. You know, he's so comfortable in high pressure situations. He's played for the Greek national team in the European Championships. He's played in two national championship games. He's been a part of the team during one of them. Um, you know, he's so you know, calm, cool, and collected for the most part. And, uh, you know, he's, he's also statistically one of the best contributors to our team. So when you combine someone who's got so much confidence on the court and a statistical contributor and someone who's been here for, for four years, it's the perfect storm. And it, it created a really strong, great leader that, you know, a lot of us have to look up to. What's your degree in? Uh, I'm finance. Oh, because I say you could have a background in communications. You, you are <laughs> like, very yes. impressive. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. James, what do you think about that? Oh, I definitely think he has a big <laughs> future in communication. Talks a little, almost like me. Talks a lot. If you guys like need it. any interns, <laughs> you know, <laughs> hit, hit me up on LinkedIn. <laughs> LinkedIn. <laughs> All right, before we cut you loose, I'm sure family stayed up late. I know the clocks changed this morning. So it's a five-hour difference in Indiana now? My, fam my family's here. They, okay, uh, well, then we don't have to say yeah, hello to them. They're here. Them. Mom, Dad, thanks so much for coming out. I love you guys so much, and uh, safe travels home. Hey, keep up the great work. Yeah. Conference next week, Long Beach State. Good luck. Thanks, fellas. Thanks so much for having me. Kurt Nussler, our guest here in the corner. He and the rest of the Rainbow Warriors win the Outrigger Invitational in five. Welcome back to the Hawaii Honda Dealers post-game show. Well, Hawaii knocks off uh, UC Irvine, so Hawaii finishes unblemished, the only unbeaten team in this year's Outrigger Invitational, going 3-0 there. You see Irvine and Grand Canyon checking at 1-2 and two along with Lewis. So everybody that came to Hawaii at least got a win. So that, that's a good thing. So what's up next for UH? Well, let me tell you, it's conference season and what a big matchup next weekend, or I guess later on this week. Uh, in a Long Beach, Hawaii, and the beach back-to-back -back nights. And then they come back home to take on CSUN beginning on March 22nd. We'll have both those matches for you on Spectrum Sports. So we were all looking forward to this weekend, the gauntlet of Lewis, number one Grand Canyon, number five UC Irvine. Hawaii wins all three. Your thoughts overall on, on, on the play of Hawaii this weekend? I'm, I'm honestly surprised. I, this is not what I thought was going to happen. I did not think Hawaii was going to be able to win all three matches. I thought they maybe go two and one, maybe even one and two. Uh, but the fact that they were able to come away at three and zero oh is very surprising. I think there was a huge growth for this team overall. Uh, we saw it in so many different areas, and it's very exciting to see just the potential that this team has and the amount of weapons they have as well. I agree with you, Ryan. I think there's a lot of questions about this Hawaii team, mostly based on their schedule of where they really stand in the rankings. But I think they made a statement this weekend, especially coming out, defeating Grand Canyon, which was ranked number one, in three fairly easily, then doing it back to back against Lewis. And then maybe a little bit of a struggle against Irvine, but they were definitely taken thrown off guard from the scattering report. Definitely a different team that they expected to have, but they responded very well. That's what I liked about tonight. They really showed their depth in their bench and they did an incredible job all right last question when the poll comes out later tomorrow morning long beach state is right now number two hawaii number three grand canyon definitely will drop out of the top spot with those two losses they're going to play each other next weekend so i don't know how much of a deal it big deal it is or not but who's number one tomorrow you think in the poll i'm going to go with hawaii i think that they have a pretty strong resume i would like it to be hawaii <laughs> I think if Hawaii would have won tonight in three, there Don't was politics. There was no Just tell undoubtedly. Us who's going to be number one? It might be Long Beach. That's not an answer. <laughs> it might be. <laughs> You're like Johnny White. <laughs> who's going who, to be number one tomorrow? Because I think it's Long Beach State. Who do you think it is? Long Beach. Let's see, we finally got an answer. Unfortunately, <laughs> it doesn't matter. They play each other next weekend, so eh, to me, it doesn't matter. Anyway, it was fun. This was. was a lot of fun, and now the more the real fun begins with conference play. But tonight it was all Hawaii's. They win in five. 
to claim the Outrigger Invitational Championship and now wrap things up for us here on this Sunday evening. Special thanks as always to our terrific hardworking, outstanding Spectrum Sports Group and my broadcast partners, Ryan and James. I'm Scott. Until next time, we bid you aloha and a good evening from Signify Arena at Stan Sheriff Center in Manoa.